Constrict. 100 accuracy. Chance to drop speed. 10 base power. A worst move in the history of Pokemon. I'll put the squeeze on you. <laughs> Unacceptable. This thing is so bad. <laughs> Game over! Hey there! VoiceOver Imported Cheese here. You are watching the premium edited version of this Pokemon Generation 1 moves tier list. If for some reason you would like to see the full 7 hour livestream with the chat, you'll find a link to that in the description. I'm gonna be editing this video pretty aggressively, but there are 165 moves to talk about, so it's gonna be pretty long no matter what. Maybe I could have cut out a little bit more, but I actually forgot to put cut on the tier list at all. Whoops. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to the Pokemon Generation 1 moves tier list. Just to be clear, we're ranking all of the moves introduced in Generation 1. <laughs> There's a lot of them, uh, over 160. For how good they are throughout the series uh, in both in-game and competitive. I know that sounds uh, like a very wide net to cast, but I, I think it'll work out. And if it doesn't, we'll do it differently next time. <laughs> so although the final tiering of these moves will reflect a move's performance throughout all eight generations, because Gen 1 is so bonkers broken, <laughs> a lot of these moves have their viability changed specifically from Gen 1 to Gen 2. They go from either complete crap to good, or more often good to complete crap. And we will be talking about all of the like quirks and glitches that make moves good, specifically in Gen 1. So I'll, I'll say where they would be if this list were Gen 1 mechanics only, but in the end, the, the placements will be considering all eight generations. I said that now, I know I'm gonna have to say it like another seven or eight times. <laughs> Wait, is this gen one or through eight? See guys, I, I literally just said it's all generations. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because I want to eventually do the moves introduced in each generation. And really it's only gen one where the mechanics are like different within the generation. So the tiers, uh, at the very top we have meta defining. Uh, so as the name implies, these moves define the meta, whether in game or in competitive. You're using these moves, your opponent's using these moves, the computer's using these moves. Uh, and if not, you have to consider the possibility that they might be using these moves. They're everywhere. Uh, under that we have staples. These moves are just just a step below. Uh, they're very good. <laughs> you're probably using them, uh, and you're not upset when you have to. Uh, these are generally the best moves of their specific types. Uh, then we have filler and outclassed. Uh, so these are your tackles, your scratches. I mean, they're bad moves, but hey, you gotta start with something, right? And I don't think it's necessarily fair to call like scratch and tackle useless. Uh, because they do have a use. Uh, you start with them, and you don't really have any other options. And in that sense, I, I would just—I would like to consider them as, as like filler. They're not—they're not useless. Uh, then under that we have niche. <laughs> uh, so these moves have some specific use, which might be useful, might not be, probably not useful. Uh, but it saves them from being the bottom tier, mostly useless. Uh, so these are from moves which I, I don't really know why you would ever use them. Uh, and I, I just added mostly to the useless, uh, just just to save myself from commenters going, well, actually, and then, I mean, they're going to do that anyway, but I, I tried. I tried to defend myself. Everybody always asks, when do we start? But nobody, nobody ever asks, how do we start? Okay, well, we start by me deciding that I've had enough. All right, <laughs> we're kicking everything off with Absorb. 20 base power heals you for half the damage it deals. That's filler if I've ever heard of it. <laughs> There's no reason to use this once you have either Mega Drain or Giga Drain. But hey, if you don't have those, use Absorb. <laughs> and that's that. Uh, yeah, if you want an in-depth analysis of Absorb, please watch my Grass is Ass video. <laughs> but yeah, you can deal four damage to the opponent and heal for two. What a deal. <laughs> ah, it's true. Guys, Absorb is hard countered by Liquid Ooze. So actually, it's uh, in a new tier below mostly useless. Ripperoni. Acid Armor, really cool name, 
And also, I have no idea where the name came from, uh, because the Japanese name is just Pokeru, which means melt. So I don't know where they got acid from, I don't know where they got armor from, uh, but I'm glad they did, because this is one of the few translations that's actually cooler than the Japanese. Uh, signature move of, I think, Vaporeon and Muck? Really cool move. Also, I guess a niche move? I wouldn't call it useless. Uh, it raises your defense by two. Generally, that's not good, uh, but, uh, and this applies to all stat raising moves within Gen 1, uh, there's something called the badge boost glitch, you know we gotta talk about that, uh, where every odd badge, so that's the boulder badge, uh, the thunder badge, the soul badge, <laughs> and the Volcano Badge, um, they boost your stats by 12%, uh, and anytime your stats are modified, uh, so that means increased or decreased, uh, you regain all those badge boosts. Uh, so really, you can think of every uh, stat boosting move in Gen 1 as like, like a mini Omni Boost. Uh, so in Gen 1, I think you can consider this like a staple move, uh, but this is considering all generations, so... I would say it's a niche move. Um, badge boost glitch does not apply in link battles. Uh, so it's purely for in-game. No more armor. Just acid. This move's pretty bad. It, it might actually be useless. <laughs> uh, in generation one, acid inflicts damage and has a 33.2% chance of lowering the target's defense by one stage. Base power 40. It's since been nerfed. Uh, so now it reduces uh, special defense instead at only a 10% chance. Not good. Uh, the question is, does this go in filler or is it does it go in useless? It's better than... Never mind. Useless. I think that that put it well. Yeah, it, it's it's useless. Yeah, also a, a move introduced later, uh, Acid Spray, is basically acid with like a guaranteed stat drop and it's still not that good. Uh, Miguel, he sees the future. You can't put the second best poison type move in filler. Guys, if you don't know poison type in Gen 1, it's really bad. How bad does it get? You're gonna find out. Agility! It's a psychic type move, I think that's a little weird. Uh, but agility, it raises your speed by plus two. Uh, among the stat boosting moves, agility is pretty good, but maybe not as useful as you would think. Uh, generally, using a turn just to boost your speed is not worth it. Uh, In-game, I don't think you would ever use this. Uh, in competitive, the only Pokemon I can think that really uses agility is, like, Empoleon? <laughs> With, like, substitute Pataya Berry? <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, again, in Gen 1, because this is a stat boost move, you can use it with the badge boost glitch. It's useful in that. It's also really good on enemies in Gen 1, uh, because if you're weak to Psychic, uh, they'll just spam agility and, like, waste their life. Oh yeah, Metagross also sometimes maybe uses agility. A few people have mentioned, so I will as well. Uh, agility, and I guess all stat boosts, can potentially be used as part of baton pass chains in competitive, uh, but I think generally you'd just be using speed boost for that. Good uh, good note uh, by Dylan Cujo, uh, what about Z moves? I think it is important to mention Z moves, uh, but that doesn't change anything for the, the moves we've talked about so far. <laughs> you know, I, I, think, uh, I, I think considering what everyone has said, uh, and the fact that raising speed is generally better than acid armor, I think uh, I, I've been swayed. I think agility will be a very low staple move. Amnesia. Uh, it's the special version of acid armor, right? It uh, it just raises your special defense by two. I don't really think that'd be uh, that useful. Aurora Beam. Am I forgetting something? Oh yeah! Uh, in Generation 1, Amnesia is insanely busted. Uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe one of the strongest boosting moves of all time, uh, Amnesia in Gen 1 specifically. Because special was only one stat, uh, it was both uh, special defense and special attack combined. It was basically like using two modern comm mines. In Generation 1 in particular, I would probably say it's meta-defining. Like, it's so good that Pokemon like Snorlax, who have bad special but have Amnesia, can actually use special attacks after using Amnesia. Like, it's it was that good. And of course, if you're Mewtwo, using Amnesia, like, forget about it. <laughs>
Forget about it, right, Amnesia? Amnesia past Gen 1 with that special interaction is pretty bad. Generally, like, raising your own special defense doesn't really do anything. You would much rather use Calm Mind. Yes, I would think Amnesia maybe, maybe gets the title of one of the most, one of the most nerfed moves ever. Uh, it went from absolutely meta-defining to barely used by anyone ever. If you can think of a legitimate use for Amnesia past Gen 1, let me know, because I can't think of one. Oh yeah, okay, we'll put Amnesia in front of Acid Armor, uh, to, uh, in, in honor of the Gen 1 jank. Aurora Beam, I think this one's pretty straightforward, uh, it's the Ice Beam at home. If you have Ice Beam, why would you ever use Aurora Beam? But if you don't have Ice Beam, Aurora Beam's okay. There you go. Easy. Uh, I guess it's really pretty, uh, and I guess specifically, if you're doing a level 5 Mewtwo versus the Elite 4 run, Aurora Beam is really important because it can drop your attack, which will then boost all of your stats due to the badge boost glitch. Barrage. Uh, the signature move of the Execute line? Uh, this is a barrage of balls. It's horrible. <laughs> Um, and the Japanese name is actually Tamanage, which is like orb or like egg toss. I don't know how it became barrage, uh, a very creative and also bad translation. Uh, it's also terrible. I mean, if this was on stuff other than the execute line, it might make it into like filler outclassed. Uh, but because this is on a Pokemon you would never use it on, it's, just, it's bad. Uh, even as far as multi-hit moves go, it's bad. You guys might not know how bad this move is, it's bad. 15 base power, actually 85. Even if this hit five times, every single time, it would still be bad. Horrible. No thanks. Okay, I think we can get through barrier really quickly thanks to uh, a comment from MCG Raven. Barrier. It's acid armor, but pink. Pretty much. It's on more Pokemon, and it's a psychic type move, but it, it does the exact same thing. It just gives you plus two defense. So everything we said about acid armor also applies to barrier, except I think acid armor has a cooler name. So acid armor wins the naming uh, war, but barrier wins the distribution one. Bide. All right. So we'll get the creatively bankrupt jokes out of the way first. Bide, a favorite move of the current U.S. president. He's always Biden. All right, enough of that. Come on, man. Uh, Bide's really bad. Uh, I, but, so Bide has a very specific niche in Gen 1, in that it's one of the only ways to hit ghost Pokemon with a, a normal move, because Bide actually ignores type immunities. So if you're doing some sort of Gen 1 challenge run, you would put Bide in niche. It's overall useless in seven out of eight generations, and it's not even that good in Gen 1. I think this is actually useless. I should maybe explain what Bide does, because you might not know. For two turns, you're, you're just taking hits, and at the end of those two turns, you return double damage. Or more realistically, you died on the first turn. So, uh, wow, bad. <laughs> that's, that's bad. Uh, in generation one, this thing didn't even have priority. So if you were slower than your opponent, you're basically gonna be taking hits for three turns because they hit you, you bide. Then they hit you again. Then they hit you again, and then you hit back. And for some reason, this is the TM you get from Brock? I mean, it's not even a rock move. Oh yeah, Bide is even worse in Gen 1 because it can last for three turns. If you're slow, that's gonna be four turns where you're getting beat up to maybe then return damage. Absolutely unacceptable. Bind! <laughs> that's, that's not confusing at all. Bide? Bind? Bind. So this is where we have to talk about trapping moves. OP, 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 in Gen 1 only. Bind, it's almost the exact same as, I think it's the last move on the list? Yeah, Wrap. Wrap and Bind are almost the exact same, except I think Bind is just strictly worse. It has 10% less accuracy for some reason. And it's also not like they're even on different Pokemon, like they are, but generally if you're like a long ropey boy, you can bind things. So trapping moves in Gen 1, it's like the epitome of dumb and uninteractive. How it works is that if you move before your opponent and you bind them, they can't do anything. Bind prevents you from acting in Gen 1. It doesn't just keep you trapped. In fact, ironically, even though in later generations, bind and similar trapping moves prevent you from switching out, in Gen 1, the only thing you can do if you get bound is to switch out. <laughs> bind, wrap, and other trapping moves in Gen 1 lock your opponent in a hell uh, where they will slowly die, unable to move, over the course of like, 20 turns. It's agony. So in-game, even though this is kind of an auto 
win. It takes forever, so I don't think you would use it. In competitive Gen 1, I guess you could use it. Uh, you can use it in com combination. Dragonite in particular can use it in combination with agility to be faster than the opponent. Uh, then start binding them and lock them down. In Generation 1 only, I would maybe consider this a staple move because of how much cheese you can do with it. Uh, but I think considering all generations, uh, this is just a niche move. It's not useless. It does do the periodic damage at the end of turn and prevent opponents from switching out. Uh, but I don't really think you could consider that useful. It's it's like a very niche thing. And we're gonna we're gonna do wrap at the exact same time because they're basically the same move, but wrap is like strictly better for some reason. Bite! <laughs> Uh, I would consider this a filler move. Uh, it was actually normal type in Gen 1, only became a dark move in Generation 2. 60 base power with a chance to flinch. If you have Technician, it's better than Crunch. Hey, I think it's better than Absorb. I think Bite, for a filler move, it's fine. Uh, it's definitely much better as a dark move now. Did it not flinch in Gen 1? Let's checking. Uh, oh, okay, it did flinch in Gen 1, but only at a 10% chance. And then from Gen 2 onwards, uh, it flinches with a 30% chance. So just overall buffed from Gen 2 onwards. As far as filler moves go, it's not bad. Blizzard! Uh, so Blizzard in Gen 1, specifically the Gen 1 of Gen 1, so red and green, was giga OP. Arguably the best move of all time because one, it was 90% accurate, and two, it had a 30% chance to freeze. And in Gen 1, freeze meant you were dead. In fact, it was worse than dead because you never thought out, so in that sense you were dead, but because you were still like on the field, your opponent could then set up. Absolutely disgusting. So uh, it was 120 base power, 90 accuracy with a free one hit KO move. Absolutely disgusting. Best move of all time. <laughs> uh, but we have to think beyond the gen one of gen one. So in actual gen one, uh, also giga OP, meta defining for sure. Um, if you had Blizzard, you were probably spamming it all the time. And that was a good strategy because you can't really stop it. <laughs> Uh, freeze chance at only 10%, but I mean still a free 10% chance to better than one he KO, amazing. Unfortunately, because we are considering all generations, a blizzard is just a staple move. <laughs> uh, it, it's generally kind of bad, I'd rather use Ice Beam, but uh, it's good in hail, uh, and in doubles it hits both your opponents. Uh, if it's hailing, it has 100% accuracy. So I, I think it's, it's a fine move. Okay, I'm get I'm getting well actually in the chat here, but I mean I guess it's fair. Yeah, it's not 100% accurate in Blizzard. It bypasses accuracy checks in Blizzard, which is better. Although in most cases it just means 100% accurate. Body slam. Uh, so body slam is pretty much like the gold standard of normal moves. It's really good. Uh, in Generation 1 in particular, uh, meta defining, absolutely everything is running body slam. <laughs> get ready to get slammed. Uh, and it also has a unique interaction with Minimize. It will ignore the accuracy boost of Minimize and deal double damage. I don't think it actually does that in Gen 1, but I mean, it's, it's, it's neat that that interaction exists. Uh, also, specifically for in-game in Gen 1, body slam is amazing because you get it on the SSN and you just put it on anything. Really, really, really good. Uh, would be meta-defining if this was Gen 1 only, but I think uh, since then, uh, you know, movesets have sort of evolved. Body Slam is really the best thing you can be doing, but it's still, like, really good. Like, no, nobody's making fun of Body Slam. Uh, I think we'll put it, uh, I think we'll actually put it above Blizzard. Like, Body Slam is, uh, it's just pretty good. Yeah, and a 30% chance to paralyze, like, for free. 85 base power, 100% accuracy, 30% chance to... Paralyzed, that's, 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 a, that's a lot of really solid aspects. Also, yes, good to note that uh, on Pokemon such as Jirachi, who have Serene Grace that uh, double secondary effect chances, a Body Slam is can pretty reliably paralyze. Need a tier above staples and call it nails. Very funny. Bone Club. Talk about filler. <laughs> I guess signature move of the Cubone and Marowak line. There's no reason why you'd ever use this over Earthquake uh, once that's available, uh, or even Dig. Um, I guess uh, one thing worth noting about Bone Club is that uh, the Japanese name for the move is Hone Bone Kombo uh, Club, so Bone Club. Uh, but Kombo is also the word for, you know, combo in Japanese. So why isn't this a multi-hit move? You got Bone Meringue. It's kind of weird. Uh, it's a filler move. It's fine. I think I'm actually going to put it below Bite uh, because 
Uh, Bite actually, you know, is fairly good in Gen 2 and beyond and like Bone Club. Does anybody ever use this? I don't know. I mean, it's not bad, but I don't know why you would use it. Yeah, basically, if you used your Dig TM on something else, then maybe you'd use Bone Club. Yeah, 85 accuracy is pretty disappointing on Bone Club. Better than Rock Throw. Guys, just wait till we get to Rock Throw. <laughs> Bone Meringue. So it's 50 base power, 90 accuracy, and it hits twice? So it's kind of like Earthquake, but Earthquake is 100 base power. <laughs> so why would you ever use Bone Meringue? The answer is because uh, it interacts differently with like Substitute and Sturdy. For example, like Earthquake would not one hit KO Pokemon with Sturdy because they'll survive, uh, but Bomerang would because the first hit breaks the Sturdy and then the second hit kills them. Uh, but in general, you would just use Earthquake. <laughs> uh, so with that in mind, I think Bomerang will go in Filler Outclassed, but as far as Filler Outclassed moves go, it's pretty good. Yeah, you trade 10% accuracy to be able to hit through substitutes and Sturdy. In general, Earthquake is just better. I'd rather have the perfect accuracy. I guess another note for Bone Rang that people have mentioned uh, is if you're doing a double battle and you don't want to hit your ally, a Bone Rang has that niche as well. Bubble Beam! Uh, it's a filler move. <laughs> Bubble Beam is, is a filler move. You get it from Misty in Generation 1, that's pretty useful. Uh, I think it has like 55 base power. I'm gonna check this because I don't want to lie to you guys. 65 base power, oh okay. Uh, used to be a 33% chance to drop speed in Gen 1, but it got nerfed, it was too good. Now it's only 10% chance, oh no. Well, either way, it's just gonna be a filler move. It's usually fine in the early game when you get it, and later on, why would you ever use this over Surf? If you don't wanna hit your partner in doubles? Yeah. I guess you could mention that uh, in Gen 1, uh, a ton of Pokemon actually learned this move from the TM from Misty. So yeah, I guess specifically for Gen 1 in-game, you could maybe bump this up within filler or outclassed. Wow. Okay, now bubble without the beam. Just a bubble. That's a filler move if I've ever seen one. It's, uh, it's, it's worse than absorb, right? Because absorb, you get that amazing deal where it heals you. Bubble, same 20 base power, chance of a speed drop. Although bubble has recently been buffed, so now it's 40 base power. It's better than Water Gun. Amazing. Filler. <laughs> Filler. Uh, for a while, uh, Bubble used to be like an example of a bad move because it's more well known than some other bad moves that are even worse. Yeah, and, and now in modern generations, they pop the Bubble. It doesn't even exist. It's gone. Uh, one very important note about Bubble is uh, when you're talking about uh, how bad Onyx is, you have to say that it, it dies to Bubble, which is true. Clamp. Uh, very aptly described by the Red Drifter. It's just wet wrap. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much everything that applies to wrap and bind also applies to clamp. Uh, I do believe clamp actually has, has higher power, but also lower accuracy. And I think accuracy is more important because the whole point of these moves is to keep hitting and uh, completely lock down your opponent. And if you miss, obviously that plan goes out the window. I think in the end, like it's it's actually less useful because of the lower hit chance. Uh, but I mean, eh, maybe it's better uh, because nothing's immune to it. And the typing is definitely better than normal. So we'll put it above it, but it's basically the same. It, it's wet wrap. Comet Punch, one of the weirdest translations ever uh, because in Japanese, it's renzoku no punch. So consecutive punch, which describes what it does. Uh, and then in Japanese, um, what is it called? Meteor Mash is literally called Comet Punch. So I don't know what they were thinking when they made this Comet Punch in English. I, the Comet Punch doesn't even describe what it does. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's barrage level bad. This thing's terrible. It's basically barrage with slightly better distribution and like slightly more usage, but I don't know why you would ever use this. Consecutive normal punches, yeah. Um, definitely like above meta defining when used by one punch man, but even then, like the whole point is that he defeats things in one punch, right? You don't want to use consecutive punches. So even then, it's not good. Whatever. I uh, will put it above barrage. Horrible. Yeah, the name Comet Punch is wasted on this move. 18 base power, that's so specific. 85% accuracy, multi-hit move. Bad. Horrible. Don't use it. Confuse Ray. I think it's gonna be kind of a hot take. I don't think Confuse Ray is that good. Uh, so usually you remember when Confuse Ray, 
you know, gets you and then cause you to hit yourself in confusion like two or three times in a row. But generally, that doesn't happen, right? It's a 100% chance to give your opponent a 50% chance to lose their turn. Like, in general, it, it's not really worth using it. It's really annoying, that's true. Uh, I think this is actually a, a niche move. Like, in terms of... Like, it's the gold standard of inflicting confusion, but confusion is not really that useful. And since Gen 7, it, it's just been bad, because confusion got nerfed from 50% down to 33%. So I think Gen 7 and beyond, this move is actually awful. Uh, but up to Gen 7, it's good for being annoying. All right, confusion. Uh, shouldn't be much confusion about this one. It's a filler move. <laughs> uh, it's your basic psychic move. Uh, in Gen 1, Psychic is OP, 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 so pretty much any Psychic move is, like, good enough to be a staple. Uh, but this thing is pretty much strictly outclassed by Psybeam, and it's... I guess I can't say strictly outclassed by Psychic, because, uh, this has a confusion chance and, uh, Psychic doesn't, but, uh, yeah, Psychic is, in, like, 99% of cases, better. Constrict. 100 accuracy. Chance to drop speed. 10 base power. A worst move in the history of Pokemon. Unacceptable. <laughs> Unacceptable. This thing is so bad. It's so bad. Uh, it is the lowest base power damaging move ever. Like, people make fun of how bad Bubble is at 20 base power. Constrict is half a Bubble. Uh, maybe if it dropped speed 100% of the time, you could probably do, like, triple backflip quadruple spin mental gymnastics to maybe put it in niche but as it stands now awful constrict needs its own tier there you go constrict horrible the constrict crucible okay uh potential uses of constrict um if you're doing a real gen 1 link battle as in like Physically, you're with your opponent with a link cable and you lose. I guess you can pull out the link cable and then use Constrict on your opponent. Uh, and if you're making, you know, degenerate uh, Pokemon fan art with like tentacle Pokemon, you can use Constrict. That's about it. As for actually using it in the game or in competitive, horrible. Worst move in the franchise. Okay, I guess tr true final note uh, about Constrict was that in Gen 1, it had a 33% chance to drop speed. And uh, Game Freak, I mean, of all of the issues, in Generation 1, uh, one of the ones that was just, it was just so pressing, it was so oppressive, they decided, in Gen 2, we got a nerf Constrict, down to 10% chance to drop speed. Uh, so, Conversion. In Generation 1, uh, Conversion is a signature move of Porygon, and it changes Porygon to its opponent's type. In Gen 2 and beyond, Conversion changes you to the first move in your, like, move list? So if your first move is, like, Psychic, uh, it'll then change your type to Psychic. Both of those effects are pretty useless. I don't know why you would ever use them. But Z Conversion is an Omni Boost. It boosts all of your stats. And you would maybe want to use that. So I think for that, we'll put it at the bottom of Niche. Uh, thank you for the $2 donation about Counter. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to add Counter to this uh, list, but uh, Counter is a Gen 1 move. Uh, and in Gen 1 in particular, it was absolutely atrocious. I'm pretty sure that in Gen 1, it only countered normal and fighting moves. And then uh, afterwards, it was changed uh, to actually counter all physical moves, which makes it way better. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not, okay, I'm not like saluting you guys. I'm trying to block light from the webcam so that I don't turn into a dark type, because if I put my hand down... Uh, this happens. So I think uh, counter, if it existed in this list, sorry about that, um, I would probably put counter in niche for generation one, because even though it only uh, counters uh, f fighting and normal moves, normal moves are everywhere, so it does have that use. I think that uh, in generations two and beyond, I would actually probably put counter at the bottom of like staples, because it has like a unique use that you kind of see all the time. In competitive, uh, in in-game, it's absolute garbage. You would never use it. Uh, but uh, counter is like a move that people use. Uh, yes, and uh, as as part of special uh, Gen One jank, uh, you can counter items, <laughs> and you can counter counter. It's really silly. I th I think this is true. It might be fake news, but I know I know we have some Italians in the chat. But I believe that 
counter in like it was initially translated as literally like kitchen counter. Is that true? Yeah, we're just doing a Wobbuffet impression for counter. That's what it is. Wobbuffet. <laughs> yes, Fabio, can you confirm or deny? Was counter translated as kitchen counter? So fake news. Um, counter was uh, translated in, in Italian, at least up to Gen 6 as like literally a thing that counts like numerically <laughs> rather than countering an attack. And then it got fixed. Okay, and apparently in Spanish, you're also counting numbers. <laughs> crab hammer, crab hammer. Uh, in generation one, not as bad as you'd actually think, uh, because even though it's a uh, water move and all water moves were special, this is the very first, get ready for it, high crit rate move. High crit rate move in gen one means it crits. <laughs> Tastes like crab. Hits like hammer. <laughs> uh, so yeah, auto crit moves are so good in Gen 1 that you can overcome the fact that uh, Kingler's uh, special tag is kind of poop. <laughs> uh, so in Gen 1, good enough to be used because it's auto crit. Gen 2 and 3, uh, I mean, kind of bad only because it's only on Pokemon that can't really use their attack stat with it. And then from 4 and beyond, actually, I think this is actually a staple move. I think it's actually like good like if you can use crab hammer you're using it um you can basically you can compare it to waterfall you trade a little bit of accuracy for a little bit more power uh, and that high crit rate uh you usually you're considering the um the power in that so in gen 1 it was 90 base power and 85 accuracy gen 5 accuracy was increased to 90 ooh and you're right uh in gen 7 it was increased to power was increased to 100 so yeah, I think with all of that considered, I think this is actually a staple move. It's basically a, an alternate waterfall, and waterfall is definitely a staple move. All right, defense curl. Yeah, this is a niche move for sure. It just raises your defense by one, but it has a special effect uh, in that it doubles the power of rollout and ice ball. Are rollout and ice ball good moves? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> But uh, that is something that it works, so I mean, we'll put it at the very bottom of a niche. Uh, I, I think it's hard to call any stat boosting move, like, mostly useless, because I mean, they do something. Is that something worth much? Uh, no. But uh, I guess, yeah, it is important to note, this is basically strictly better than Harden. So I guess we'll also talk about Harden here, because Harden is... Harden is bad defense curl. Wow. That's embarrassing. <laughs> like, the main use of Harden is for, like, immature Metapod jokes. That's about it. So, I guess in the 13-year-old meta, uh, Harden is better. Uh, but once you once you get out of middle school, uh, Defense Girl is better. Uh, and as with all stat-boosting moves, in Gen 1, you can consider them uh, much better because you also get the badge boost glitch. But this is for all generations. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're just going to go at, like, bottom of niche. And yes, uh... <laughs> Ice Ball not only exists, <laughs> but gets boosted by Defense Girl. Dig. Uh, this move has actually been changed quite a lot. Uh, in Gen 1 in particular, it was really good. It was in Staples. It was 100 base power. Uh, it was also like OPOP in-game because you got it so early. It was really good. Uh, then in Gen 2, they, they nerfed it uh, quite a lot. They took it down to 60 base power. And then since then, they buffed it again. <laughs> Not quite up to 100, but up to 80. So that's a lot of changes. Where does Dig go overall? I think it's filler. Uh, I think it's filler. We'll put it below Bone Meringue. Uh, you basically never want to use this in competitive because like two turn moves are bad. Uh, in Gen 1, you could actually dodge Earthquake with Dig, which was really dumb. Uh, and they changed that in Gen 2 and beyond, so it works like it should. Uh, you don't dodge it. In fact, you get wrecked. Uh, you take double damage from Earthquake if you dig. <laughs> Dig with Ninjask to boost speed more. What a strategy. Uh, just protect, bro. Ooh, and we'll mention that, but obviously this doesn't factor in. Uh, there is a glitch using both Dig and Fly in Generation 1 that makes you invincible. Uh, so if you get fully paralyzed during the invulnerability turn of uh, Dig or Fly, uh, you stay invulnerable. Like, you stay in that state and you can still attack. Really stupid. <laughs> I'm not counting that, but that is possible. I actually like to use Dig with Vikavolt because nobody expects that. Uh, this is going to sound really rude and aggressive, but uh, nobody expects that because it's really bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Disable. It's hard to put into words 
how atrocious Disable was early on. I'm just going to read you what it used to do. Uh, because in, in, in modern games, how it works is uh, it disables the last move your opponent used with 100% accuracy, which is... Like, I think that barely gets it into niche, because you can, like, disable choice moves, and that, like, does something. But I think to understand why I think disable is actually useless, we have to look at look at the history of it. Uh, in Generation 1, it was 55% accurate. Wow. So when did they buff the accuracy? They buffed in Gen 2, right? Nope, they buffed it in Generation 4 to 80%. And it took until Generation 5 to actually make it a 100% chance to do barely anything. Wow, what a move. That sounds pretty bad to me. The question is if it goes in mostly useless or in like barely niche because maybe Gengar can disable something. Disable hard counters Magikarp under level 16. That's true and we do know that the meta revolves around uh, level 14 Magikarps. Yeah, I think disable is mostly useless. In fact, we'll we'll put it at the top of mostly useless because maybe in some universe in a competitive battle you can disable something with Gengar. Uh, I guess um, one important use for disable uh, is if you're for some reason doing an A button only run of a certain game, a disable is a mega one hit KO move because you're then forced to reset your game. With three badges in hand, we make our way through Rock Tunnel and towards Lavender Town. Not much to say, except along the way I fought a Venonat, which... What? I still have plenty of PP. Oh yeah. In this run, Disable is basically a super one-hit KO move. It doesn't actually KO you, but it softlocks you and forces you to reset. I really like Disable on Moody Glalie. Okay, moving on. Okay, so Dizzy Punch. It's a 70 base power move, and in Generation 1, it didn't, it didn't even have a chance to confuse. Wow. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a filler outclass move. Would you ever choose to use this? 70 base power is not horrible, but wow. Uh, normal moves in particular are prone to being put in filler outclass because in Gen 2 and beyond, return exists. Why would you ever use Dizzy Punch? You wouldn't. Has a cool name. Yes, that's true. It got buffed to 120. Uh, you take one third, I think, of the damage you deal as recoil. But uh, there are several Pokemon where Double Edge is really good. Um, Reckless Staraptor uh, can use it to deal massive damage. Uh, and Mega Salamence, for the uh, brief moment where it wasn't banned, uh, could use it with Aerialate to deal insane damage. Uh, Double Edge, I think, is pretty good. In general, it's it's worth the HP recoil. Uh, maybe not so much in-game because, you know, the damage sticks with you after battle, which is really annoying. But in competitive, you generally don't care about recoil because the damage you take from recoil is less than the damage you would take from your opponent if they survived because you used a weaker move. Uh, so, like, recoil is a downside, but it's not as bad as you might think. Yeah, I think that's a good way to describe it, um, Air Tempest. It's not good on most mons, but if it's good, it's really good. Yeah. Can't wait for Triple Edge. <laughs> Double kick. Kick him. Uh, wow, what a what a filler move. <laughs> what would you use this for in Gen 1? Uh, y in yellow, you get Nidoran and you can double kick uh, Onyx. That's pretty useful. People talk about double kick on Jolteon. It's it's not good on Jolteon. Really, if you're facing a ground type move on Jolteon, you should just, you know, switch, bro. But, uh, and it yes, very important to mention, uh, this is a key player in the Game Freak is bad meta. Uh, because when you talk about bad animations in the... Uh, new new games, uh, you gotta talk about double kick, because it's really embarrassing, it just, your Pokemon just hops twice. Uh, whereas in the old games, they used to actually um, have like kicking animations. Waiting on single kick, when will they add kick? Uh, you'll notice there's a lot of kicks. Alright, we just got done double kicking, and now we will double slap, which always hits at least double and maybe can be triple slap or quadruple slap or quintuple slap. No matter how many slaps you get, it's pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't like multi-hit moves. They're not good in general. Uh, I mean, there are exceptions, right? Like Rock Blast, uh, bullet, bullet Seed, Icicle Spear. Uh, if you have like Skill Link or Technician, these actually get pretty good. Uh, but without those and considering it's just uh, like a normal move, this thing is not good. Is it 100% hit? It might be 100% hit though. No, it's 85% hit. So yeah, all of these multi-hit moves, they're basically just 
RNG fiestas. So first you have to hit, uh, then you have to hit multiple times. I mean, there's not an accuracy check on each one. Um, but even if you hit all five times, it's like not that good. Uh, yes, uh, in in the anime, uh, it's very important uh, for Jigglypuff to be able to slap things. And I think, I guess, in the pay to win garbage game, Pokemon Unite, uh, Wigglytuff uses double slap. Double team, are you guys ready? Because I'm about to use it, I set this up. Boom! <laughs> double team, baby, you can't hit me. Uh, yeah, Double Team is uh, specifically in the anime uh, really, really good because uh, I think your clones can also attack because uh, it's like the Naruto uh, Shadow Clone Jutsu, right? Kagebunshin! Uh, where the clones can also do things. Uh, in the game, it's not good. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's get rid of that. Believe it! Yeah, so like uh, definitely meta-defining in the anime, but in terms of in-game, uh, yeah, no. It's uh, it's, it's definitely niche. Uh, I will say, I will put it with the other like boosting moves because like uh, if you're doing some sort of like cheat strat um boosting your evasion can be like pretty good um in competitive you're literally like not allowed to use it uh, because it just turns the entire match into an rng fiesta it's not banned because it's good in competitive it's banned because it's really really annoying also double team i think is just a very confusing english name because what about double team implies that you're cloning yourself and raising your evasion i think that's really confusing I think the Japanese name shadow clone is much better we'll shadow clone one more time oh wait that didn't work um We'll shadow clone one more time. Uh, uh, and then that's it. Okay. Dragon rage, dragon rage. Uh, filler. <laughs> uh, literally the only dragon move in Gen 1. Uh, and it, uh, it just does set damage. It always does 40 damage. So it's actually interesting because if you get this early game on certain Pokemon, it's insane, right? Because your opponents don't even have 40 HP, so it just kills them all the time, and I think this is actually banned in Little Cup because it just like annihilates things because everything's level five. Uh, but yeah, this is this is filler. I think I'll put it above uh, Absorb and Bubble because uh, in like the very specific instances where you happen to get this early game, yeah, it's pretty good. Once you get past level forty, this becomes like strictly worse than Nightshade or Seismic Toss. Anything to add about Dragon Rage? Dragon Rage. Come along, take 40 damage, it's time for Dragon Rage. Yeah, Dragon Rage is the only dragon move in Gen 1, so like, dragon being weak to dragon literally does not matter, yeah. Dragon Rage is overpowered in Little Cup, it's banned. Uh, but you know what's also like, unironically very good in Little Cup? Onyx! I don't think you can trust Little Cup, guys. <laughs> Dream Eater! Uh, so Dream Eater is kind of a weird case because if you can use it, it's it's pretty good, right? It's a hundred base power, uh, and it heals you for half the damage you deal. So unlike Absorb, where like the healing effect sort of costs you a lot of base power, uh, Dream Eater hits pretty hard. The issue is your opponent has to be asleep. Uh, so in competitive, you would never use this because you just have better options. Uh, but in game, I, I think you can make decent use of it because sustain actually does matter. Like, I mean, enough people do hypnosis dream eater things to maybe get this into filler. I, I don't know if this goes in filler or if it goes in niche. Niche since it's so dependent on sleep. I, I think I will agree with that. I think that because you have to dedicate a move slot to sleep uh, and like sleep moves are unreliable to begin with, I think we will put it in niche despite the fact that if you use it, it's actually pretty strong. So put it at, I think like the top of niche. Drill Peck. I think this one should be pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just a staple move. If you're a flying type and you're looking for an okay flying move, use Drill Peck. Uh, it's the best flying type move in Gen 1. Uh, since then, you've gotten some better options, like acrobatics is better, I mean, if you don't have your item. Uh, but typically you do want to use items, so like acrobatic strats are like very specific. Yeah, I think Drill Peck is a very solid flying type option. Solid enough that it's not filler. Like, there are cases where Drill Peck is actually your best flying move. In general, if you have Brave Bird, you're gonna use that over Drill Peck, but if you don't, Drill Peck's pretty good. How long have we been going? Two hours. How many are left? Uh-oh. I think we can be done in like five hours. Earthquake. E. Q. Everybody knows it. This is going to be our very first addition to Meta Defining. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, like, I mean, this is going to be the best move introduced in Generation 1. Everybody knows Earthquake. And the thing is, like, it's kind of a, a boring move, right? It's just 100 base power, 100 accuracy ground move. It's simple, I won't complain about it. This is the gold standard for an offensive move. Like, you have to consider how much of both, like, your in-game playthroughs and competitive matches are shaped around 
Earthquake. In game, pretty much one of the biggest questions you're going to be asking yourself is, well, the biggest two questions are going to be, one, where is the Earthquake TM? And two, who do I use it on? <laughs> Everybody's gunning for Earthquake. It's amazing in game and like consider like flying type basically exists to like negate Earthquake Levitate a pretty good ability a large reason of why that's good is that it negates Earthquake air balloon is an item Negates Earthquake <laughs> you have to consider like when talk about how good a Pokemon is how weak are they to Earthquake? <laughs> because you were 100% running into Earthquake. Uh, when you're using a choice item, you have to consider like how disastrous is it if I if I Earthquake and my opponent like switches into a flying type Pokemon? Earthquake is so good, guys. Like throughout your entire playthrough, you're gonna be thinking about Earthquake. And in a competitive match, always, always in the back of your mind is the possibility of getting Earthquaked. Amazing move, meta defining for sure. Best move introduced in Gen 1 and one of the best moves ever. Earthquake arguably not as good in doubles because it suffers from the spread move penalty. Uh, so it's only going to be at 75 base power and you, have to, you also have to consider that uh, it hits your partner potentially. Uh, but just uh, just build your team around it, five head, like easy. Uh, but high horsepower definitely has more of a use uh, in VGC than it would, uh, VGC doubles than it would in like singles. Egg bomb. I think I, I did an entire egg moves uh, run in Gen 1, so I hate this move so much. I never want to see this again. Yeah, I think this is one that goes in useless because of the Pokemon that get it. Uh, if this was like a more general move that more Pokemon could use, I guess I'd put it in filler outclassed because it's 100 base power, 75% accuracy. Why would you ever use that over return? The answer would be because you don't have access to return, right? Uh, but that barely even works because almost every Pokemon learns return. Egg Bomb is garbage. I'm putting it here. It's bad. Is it worse than- it's not worse than Bide. It's better than Barrage. Uh, so yeah, I guess egg, egg Bomb, a staple move if you're doing a really dumb Gen 1 egg move only meme video. Other than that, horrible. Ember! I think this is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a, you know, it, it's your filler move. Uh, for fire, I think it, it's definitely... Uh, better than like water gun because you get that 10% burn chance, which is a real upside uh, But yeah 40 base power fire move use it in the early game and then replace it with better moves later Ember Island players is one of the best episodes of Avatar the last airbender ever But uh, I mean that doesn't factor in here, but that is another place where Ember is featured I guess Explosion! Uh, and we'll do self-destruct at the same time because they're basically the same move. Uh, explosion, I think I'm able to say this, is strictly better than self-destruct. It's just that not every Pokemon that gets self-destruct also gets explosion. That pretty much only applies to uh, Snorlax, I think. So explosion, I think it goes at the very bottom of uh, staples because uh, this would be higher up if we were only going up to like Gen 4. Unfortunately, uh, this move got nerfed in Generation 5. How Explosion and Self-Destruct used to work was they actually had a hidden effect where they calculated your opponent's defense at half. So it did massive damage. <laughs> and obviously the cost for using this is pretty extreme. Uh, you faint, uh, but there are, believe it or not, there are worse downsides. We'll get to that when we talk about Hyper Beam. I mean, they had a very real use in gens uh, one to four. You sacrifice a move slot uh, to give yourself basically a delete button on one of your opponent's Pokemon if you got the chance to use it. And that was pretty useful. Once you were done doing like other things that you wanted to do, like, you know, maybe like setting up stealth rocks or like applying status, and you wanted to get another one of your Pokemon onto the field while dealing massive damage, uh, you could just go kaboom, okay? I mean, uh, soap, soap scum, scum lime scale, rust, rust, gone. That'll make more sense in the edit, I promise, okay? Uh, also, um, I think somebody mentioned Memento being bad. Uh, Memento is really good because what it does is uh, Memento has the same downside as Explosion and Self-Destruct where you faint when you use it. And what you do is you lower both of your opponent's attacking stats by two, which is deceptively good because basically it then forces your opponent to switch. They're not forced to switch, but they're highly encouraged to switch, which means that the Pokemon that you just get to bring in pretty much gets a free turn. Memento is really good. Fire Blast! Channel veterans might know that this is my favorite move of all time. It's really cool. So the symbol that it makes, uh, Dai, uh, is used in the, um, Obon Festival here in Japan. You basically, you burn that symbol 
uh, into mountainsides uh, to help guide the spirits of the dead back to the world. Like, really cool. I think this is uh, definitely a staple move. Uh, yeah, I'll put it staple above Body Slam. This is just the, the gold standard for risk reward move because you get a drop in accuracy for a bit of extra power. I think that Flamethrower is overall better, but Fire Blast is not bad at all. And I think in Generation 1, it actually had a 30% uh, burn chance, which was really nice. And that's since been nerfed to 10%, rightfully so. Oh, I didn't mention what uh, the symbol die actually means. Uh, it just means big. <laughs> it just means big or great. Fire Punch. And I think we'll do, uh, we'll do Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, and Ice Punch at the same time, because they're basically the same, right? <laughs> uh, they're just different types. I, I think they actually go in staple and not uh, filler, because for a lot of Pokemon, uh, that have that have hands uh this is actually like their best option uh, and you can like really swap these around like the placement of this doesn't really matter uh, i guess i'll maybe put ice punch at the top because it's really the most used for like coverage they have a, a real role in game because you tend to get these kind of early uh specifically like the gen 2 like in-game meta is punching because in the golden run department store you can buy these tms so what you do is you get cadabra and you, you start punching people Put Drill Peck behind. Uh, I'd put them above Drill Peck, yeah. Oh yeah, and they do get boosted by Iron Fist if you happen to have that. Staple coverage moves, we'll leave it at that. Fire Spin. Uh, so as somebody uh, in the chat put it earlier, a clamp is just wet wrap. Fire Spin is just uh, not wet wrap, I guess. Again, like these four are like basically the same. It, it, it's hot wrap, I guess. Uh, so you get a more useful type, uh, but you also get terrible accuracy. It's like 70 accuracy, which is really bad. The anime makes you think that this move is super good. It could be hot wrap, wrap where you're spitting fire. In general, past Gen 1, this is absolute garbage. Uh, but in Gen 1, you can use this as part of the uh, Trapping Move uh, Cheese family. Uh, we got Soggy Wrap, we got Spicy Wrap, and we got Wrap Wrap. Then we have Bind, which is clearly the worst. Fissure! I guess we'll talk about all of the Oko moves together because they're kind of the same. The thumbnail of this video has, has Horn Drill in it because in Gen 1, Horn Drill was the closest thing you could get to an I Win button. And to understand why we have to talk about Gen 1 X accuracy, uh, it didn't increase your accuracy, it just removed the accuracy check. So it basically turned every move into swift, which meant that if you had Horn Drill, uh, and it had a condition to use, so you had to be faster than your opponent. But if you were faster than your opponent and you had Horn Drill, you could just click Horn Drill and knock them out, and that was it. <laughs> That's absurd. Uh, so in Gen 1 in-game only, this would go in staples, uh, but because this is a tier list for all generations, all of the Oko moves are going to be going in niche. Uh, so it's a 30% chance to knock out your opponent. Why do that when you have a 100% chance to knock them out with a better move that actually does damage? So Fissure, Horn Drill, and Guillotine. I know it's Guillotine, guys. I just wanted to trigger you a bit. Uh, Horn Drill and Guillotine, I think, are exactly the same. I don't think there's any differences in them, but Fissure, because it's a ground type move, you can hit ghosts with it, but you also can't hit flying types. You got to consider that. I think in general, actually, uh, we'll, we'll put these, uh, we'll put Fissure below them because uh, flying types are more common than ghost types. Where is Sheer Cold? I mean, it doesn't exist yet, but a Sheer Cold, I guess, would be the best among these, except you get an accuracy penalty if you're not an ice type. And I mean, an accuracy penalty on a 30% accurate move is pretty rough. $5 donation from uh, Prada with an O. Uh, Guile from Street Fighter Otai. Can you explain that to me, please? I, I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> a man named Cheese undervaluing Cheese Strat. SMH, sorry. Should Oko moves not have been on the list, period, count as a complaint because the idea is kind of dumb? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I've been, I've been pronouncing it wrong. It should be Guilatine, sorry. My mistake, guys. Uh, I'll delete my channel after the stream. Pronounce Arceus for us. Uh, there you go. So this is the last thing we'll say about um, accuracy regarding uh, the Oko moves. So uh, 1 and KO moves are 30 plus the level difference between you and your opponent. And Sheer Cold is 20% accurate instead of 30 if used by a non-ice type. Okay, there we go. Flamethrower. I think you guys all already know. Gold standard of staple moves, right? Previously 95 base power has since been nerfed to 90, which is still very good. 100% accurate. Uh, deals massive damage and has a chance to burn. Amazing. Uh, what's bad about Flamethrower? Nothing. Uh, there are cases where you'd rather get the extra power from Fire Blast, but I think in most cases, 
You would rather just use Flamethrower. Very, very good move. Flash. Bad. That's <laughs> bad. Uh, I'm honestly tempted to put it in mostly useless because how do you describe a strictly worse sand attack? Uh, I, I guess I'll put it at the top of mostly useless. Uh, if this was 100% accurate the entire time, I would maybe put it in niche because that's where I think sand attack is going to go. But Flash literally has 70% accuracy. What? Why? Why? You can use it outside of battle, but I'm not going to count that. Uh, and I think it's used for a joke with an NPC, and I think in Gen 6, uh, where the trainer that gives you Flash is like wearing a trench coat, so they like make a joke out of that. Why is kicking sand 100% accurate, but an omnidirectional flash of light is not? Because you can close your eyes, bro. Come on. Come on. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> Did I miss cut? Oh my god, I missed cut. Oh my god. People didn't even notice that I forgot cut because it's so bad. Yeah, cut. You might notice uh, it's not on the list. Uh, that's because, you know, it didn't make the cut. It got cut from the list. Uh, and that's a uh, th that's a meta-defining joke, okay? Like, it's it's so meta, it's not even the list. Okay, yeah, we gotta talk about cut. I forgot to add it, sorry. Cut, one of the worst translations ever? Sneakily. We, we were robbed. So, the Japanese name of cut is Iaigiri. Y you probably don't know what that means, but it's basically the ultimate weeb move. Like, if you've studied the blade, you know about Iai Giri. Iai, Iai Jutsu is the art of basically drawing your weapon, killing your opponent, cleaning your weapon, and resheathing it in one move. So yeah, ultimate weeb move. And in pretty much any Japanese game that has swords, somebody's doing that. In Monster Hunter, uh, the longsword has an Iai Jutsu counter that's obscenely overpowered. <laughs> it's really strong. Uh, in Final Fantasy XIV, the samurai class's entire, like, finishing moves are all based on Iai Jutsu. In, like, Twilight Princess, uh, Link has a special move, I think it's called Mortal Draw. Sounds really cool. Uh, is if you draw your weapon as an enemy attacks you and you don't lock on, you instantly kill them. Really cool. And in Pokemon, what do we get as Iai Jutsu? Uh, we get cut. We were robbed, okay? Uh, and we were especially robbed because Cut sucks. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a super filler move. It's like Scratch plus. Scratch is a pretty low bar to clear, right? <laughs> I think it's 50 base power and it's not even 100% accurate. It's 95 accurate, why? And in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, they give you Cut TMs. Why would you ever use this? It's so insulting, awful. We'll put it in filler in the edit. Uh, and also, it's worth noting that in Gen 1, Cut is absolutely awful uh, because there is no move deleter. So if you ever teach a Pokemon Cut, uh, you are stuck with it. And before you, well actually, you can do transfer shenanigans with Pokemon Stadium to delete HM moves. Yeah, sure, you're not gonna do that. You're stuck with HM moves. Bad. Speaking of HM moves, Fly! Uh, for a while, this sort of used to be your your best option for a flying move. I don't know if I would actually consider this a staple. Uh, the question is whether it goes in staple or in filler out class. Uh, I think uh, people are bringing it up because of Z moves and Max moves. It might go in staple, but I'm not that excited about it. Fly is the best HM move. What universe are you from, bro? Spoilers, Fly is not the best HM move. Yeah, I think Fly, it, it's decent enough, and I think for enough of Pokemon's history, Fly was your best option, that it like, it sneaks into staples. Uh, Fly used to be, I think, 70 base power, and it's since been buffed to 90, which is much better. Even though it's a two turn move, uh, it's kinda okay. Bounce is overall better than Fly, because I think it has the paralysis chance, but I think uh, Bounce also has worse distribution and lower accuracy. Yeah, we'll put Fly, like, below Drill Peck, I guess. Focus energy. <laughs> This is to go even further beyond! Yeah, it's bad. Uh, it's hilariously broken in Gen 1. And when I say hilariously, I actually mean like funnily. It's supposed to quadruple your crit rate and it cuts it to a fourth. You can't tell me that's not hilarious. So in Gen 1, like actively bad? <laughs> So bad. I think they fixed it in Stadium. Specifically in Gen 1, a Focus Energy is actually worse than Constrict. Uh, but since then, it actually works. 
Is it good? Uh, no, but with like crit mechanics uh, change. So what Focus Energy does now is it raises your crit by two stages. And since I think Gen 6, uh, they nerfed crits down to uh, 1.5 damage instead of double. But Focus Energy does have a niche use. Uh, you can put it on, yeah, basically Kingdra. So you, you focus energy and then you equip a, a scope lens which I believe gives you almost 100% crit. It might actually be 100% crit. And then uh, with 100% crit and a Draco Meteor, um, that ignores the stat drop from a Draco Meteor because crits ignore your own uh, stat drops. Is that good? I, I don't really think so, but I mean, it's kind of neat. I may as well do the next two together, yeah. Fury Attack and Fury Swipes. Wow, these moves are bad. Uh, they're basically double slap, uh, but they're on different Pokemon. Uh, the same thing, the things we said about Double Slap also apply, he, not even fully accurate, completely outclassed, normal type multi-hit moves. I don't know why you would use these. I think in my Ditto challenge, like Ditto Mirror Match challenge, there's one point where I get absolutely wrecked by Fury Attack. Uh, because in Gen 1 only, if the first part of your multi-hit move crits, they all crit. Next is this male junior trainer who uses Cooler Pidgey and Eradicate. We lead off with a leer to prepare for our pecking spree and What? A great game. If you land a crit with the first hit, I guess they do okay damage if you get all five hits. So it's RNG to hit, RNG to crit, and RNG to get max hits. And if you get super duper lucky, it ends up being okay. Sounds pretty bad to me. Uh, I guess we should we should mention the memes that you can do with this. One thing you can do is in doubles, if you have a Pokemon with the ability Anger Point, uh, what Anger Point does is if you get crit, it gives you a belly drum. You have your partner uh, Fury Swipe you with a scope lens, hoping to crit you. And then you get the max attack and then you can like rock slide your opponent. You can do this with like Vigoroth and Tauros. I think you can tell by the way I'm describing this, it's not good. And it's not really even that fun, but hey, you can do it. Uh, also Fury Attack's Japanese name. Uh, if you go to a uh, like Bulbapedia or something, it'll tell you that the Japanese name is a disturbed stab, which sounds really cool, right? Like, oh, I'm, I'm so disturbed. Uh, but yeah, it means disturbed as in like not continuous, right? Uh, it means like segmented. So not, not even cool in Japanese, bad. Glare. Okay, move. It actually has been buffed throughout the generations. It's now perfectly accurate. It wasn't always. It used to be 75. Uh, then in generation five, it was buffed to 90. Uh, and then in six onwards, it's now 100. So it, it's pretty useful. I'd, I'd say that Thunder Wave in general is better. Uh, but the important thing about Glare, right, is that uh, you could use it to paralyze a ground type Pokemon for a while. Because uh, the main way you would paralyze Pokemon in general is Thunder Wave, which doesn't affect ground types. So Glare had that use. Also, Glare in Japanese is literally Snake Eyes, and they just left that part out of the English, so it's really confusing as to why mostly snakes get it, whereas in Japanese it's very clear. I don't know why they got rid of the snake part. I don't know where to put it. Uh, maybe we would put it in staples, because if you have Glare, you're probably using it. Put it here, how's that? Staple since it's just better Thunder Wave. Well, it's better now, but it wasn't always better. In fact, for most of the game, it was not better. And it also has way worse distribution than Thunder Wave. Like everything is Thunder Wave. Growl, lowers attack by one stage. Uh, in doubles, it hits both your opponents, hey. So lowering attack by one stage is not very exciting, but I mean, one way to look at it is Intimidate is one of the best abilities in the game, right? And its effect is Growl. But, of course, Intimidate is free, and Growl is not. Growl costs you a turn. Uh, so Growl, I think, uh, it either goes in filler outclass or niche. I think it's niche. One use of Growl, obviously in competitive, you're never using Growl. But, in in-game playthroughs, if you have a Pokemon that's maybe not strong enough to fight and actually deal damage, uh, but is able to lower a powerful opponent's stats through Growl, you'd use that. Competitive Gen 2 used Growl. Yeah, competitive Gen 2 was really weird though. Should it go in outclassed or niche? Because I think this is going to, um, this is also going to define pretty much all of the like stat lowering moves. Okay, I think we're going to put them in, uh, we're going to put them in niche. 
Uh, why would you use growl when baby doll eyes at least has priority? And the answer is because you don't learn baby doll eyes. Growth. A uh, growth is actually pretty good. <laughs> Deceptively good. Uh, so in generation one, growth raised your special, uh, which made it half an amnesia. So in gen one, pretty darn good. Then in gens 2 through, I think, 5, it was just plus 1 to your special attack, which was like, kinda eh? That would put it here in niche, but it got the big buffs, where it gives you plus 1, plus 1, so that's the same as workup, except it has an additional upside in sunlight, where it actually gives you plus 2, plus 2, uh, which makes it really good. So if you're on a sun team and you growth, it's over. Uh, and in the worst case scenario where it's not sunny, it's still plus one plus one to both your offenses, which is fine. So I think overall, I'm gonna put it here in staples next to agility. Gust. This move changed a lot. In generation one, it was actually a normal type move. And in generation two, they made it a flying move as it should be, obviously. Uh, and then I believe it was, it was a physical move because all of the uh, flying type moves were physical. And then when the special split hit in Gen 4, it became a special move. So it started off as a normal physical move, then it became a flying physical move. And nowadays, it is a special flying move, which does double damage to Pokemon using fly. It's a filler move. Haze. <laughs> uh, interesting note about Haze and Mist. Uh, haze in Japanese is uh, Black Mist and mist in English is white mist. I don't know why they got rid of the colors, uh, why mist became just mist, uh, but whatever. Haze! Uh, so it's it's okay. I think I'm gonna put it in, in niche. So what haze does is it removes all stat changes. Uh, and also in Gen 1, it did a bunch of wonky stuff. It like removed your badge boosts. It thawed frozen Pokemon. It did a bunch of stuff it wasn't supposed to. I think it also removed confusion. Just an absolute mess. And then in Gen 2 and beyond, it does what it's supposed to do. It just removes stat changes. <laughs> uh, I think nowadays you would basically never use Haze because uh, there's a move called Clear Smog, which basically does the same thing. It removes stat changes from your opponents. Uh, unless they're a steel type, I guess, because clear smug is a poison type move. Uh, but I wouldn't say haze is useless. Uh, there are times when you want to remove stat changes, and haze does that. Uh, is, it, should it be at the top of niche? I don't know about that. Maybe we'll put it like uh, here ish. But it's not useless. Um, ironically, haze is far outclassed by phasing moves. Uh, it, it, I'm going to type it in the chat so you know what I'm actually talking about. P hazing. Phasing, uh, I think the P stands for pseudo. Phasing moves are Roar and Whirlwind, uh, which force your opponent to switch out. And in general, they're much better than Haze, uh, because when you do that, you also force your opponent to take entry hazard damage, and you're probably using entry hazards. So for the most part, you would use those phasing moves over Haze, uh, but Haze itself is still like, okay. Uh, fa it's true, phasing does not work if it's the opponent's last Pokemon, which doesn't really matter. Uh, except in Gen 2, sometimes what you can do is kill your entire team so that your last Pokemon is Snorlax, and then your opponent can no longer uh, roar you out, and then you win. Top of niche? Yeah, okay, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll put it uh, top of niche. Haze has the benefit of not having negative priority like Roar. That's true. For the most part, the Pokemon that are using Haze are like not that fast. They were going second anyway. Headbutt! It's the budget body slam. It's not bad at all. Um, so here's the question, does Headbot go in staples or does it go in filler outclassed? Because it's it's pretty outclassed, but it's also not bad on its own. Yeah, you mostly, honestly, I think I'm going to put it in uh, in filler outclassed because it, it is the body slam at home, but there are specific uses for this. So in Gen 2 specifically, you get the Headbutt TM in Ilex Forest, which is like really early. And then you can start, uh, start... Start bashing people, uh, give them give the Tanjiro treatment. <laughs> and if you have Serene Grace Dunsparce, I guess you can try. Pray to your deity of choice, pick, pick a, a god, god and pray, and, pray. Uh, and, and try some flinch strats. What is Dunsparce outspeeding to flinch? Well, obviously you paralyze them with Serene Grace body slam first, right? High jump kick and jump kick. I think high jump kick is just strictly better then Jump Kick, they have the same accuracy, but High Jump Kick has more power. It has insane power. It has 130 in the modern games, and Jump Kick has 
only 100. It's still really good. Uh, but somebody already pointed out in the chat, uh, basically, some Pokemon get Jump Kick, but not High Jump Kick. If you get both, obviously, you should just use High Jump Kick. Uh, high Jump Kick used to be spelled with only H-I, and then they decided to change it to actually the word High. Oh, Jump Kick is 95 accuracy? Okay. So, Jump Kick has slightly better accuracy than High Jump Kick, so it's not strictly better. Uh, good point. But I think they both have the downside where, uh, if you miss, you lose half your health in the modern games. The High Jump Kick changes are so crazy that I, I think I have to read this out uh, because I'm, I'm going to make a mistake if I don't. They're so specific, so here we go. And I think all of these High Jump Kick changes also apply to Jump Kick. So both of these were added in Generation 1. So Generation 1, High Jump Kick does damage with a base power of 85. If it misses, the user will take crash damage of 1 HP. If used against a ghost type, then the user will not take crash damage. In this generation only, if the user of high jump kick attacks first and faints itself due to crash damage, the target will not attack or be subjected to recurrent damage that round. Okay. Generation 2. The crash damage is now 1 eighth of the move the damage would have dealt. Generation 3. The crash damage is now 1 half of the damage it would have dealt. Generation 4. High jump kick's base power has increased from 85 to 100. It cannot be used if the move gravity is in effect. Uh, the user can now crash due to a target's type immunity and will take crash damage equal to half of the target's max HP. Uh, the user will not take crash damage if high jump kick fails due to there being no remaining targets. Generation 5 and onwards, high jump kick's base damage has increased from 100 to 130 and its PP has reduced from 20 to 10. The crash damage is now always equal to half of the user's max HP rounded down. Uh, oof. Uh, <laughs> Uh, can you guys see why I chose to read that out and not try and do it from memory? Uh, so one note about High Jump Kick is that the name of it is really confusing in English. Because I think what people assume Jump Kick is like is that it's kind of like a drop kick, right? Like you jump up high and then you crash down on your opponent. Uh, but that's not what it actually is. The Japanese name is uh, Tobi Hizageri, which is Flying Knee Kick. It's basically, I mean, I'll see if I can do this. I'll see if it's in if it's in the thing. Uh, you can see full body cheese here. It's basically the um, it's the Captain Falcon knee. Gah! Show me a moves. So you can see that in or is it Pokken, the fighting game? A uh, Blaziken has it where you just yeah you knee him, uh, and if you miss, it's so sad because Blaziken just kind of lays on the floor <laughs> like it defeated. We should rank the moves. They're both really good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're both really good. Uh, I think they're gonna be uh, high staples. I, I think they're actually like better than not not better than Blizzard. I think considering how insane Blizzard was early on. <laughs> Unrelated, but I love the Hello Kitty pajamas. Thank you. Uh, and if we want to talk about Gen One in particular, High Jump Kick is probably the best fighting type move in the game. But that's not saying much. <laughs> uh, fighting in Gen One was really really bad, really bad. It might actually be the worst type in the history of Pokemon, aside from maybe Gen One Poison, Horn Attack. Uh, this is really straightforward. It's a 65 base power filler move. I don't think it's ever actually changed throughout the series. So, I mean, it's I'd probably say it's better than these awful multi-hit moves. Uh, we'll move Ember up here. Uh, if you have nothing better to use, you can use Horn, ta horn Attack, but uh, eventually you'll get better stuff to move. There you go. Hydro Pump. Uh, so Hydro Pump is the water type version of Fire Blast. For whatever reason, I think Fire Blast has always been 85% accuracy, and Hydro Pump has only been 80 accuracy despite not having the upside of burning. I don't know why. Uh, but it's basically the same as Fire Blast, right? Uh, it's the water type version, 120 base power. That's a lot of water. I think in general, Surf is better, uh, but there definitely is a use for a high base power water move like Hydro Pump. Were Frenzy Plant, Blast Burn, and Hydro Cannon not in Gen 1? This guy, this guy started with Fire Red and Leaf Green. They were not in Gen 1, no. Hyper Beam! Uh, one of the best moves in the anime, and in Generation 1 only, I would say this was meta-defining, right? Because of, uh, and this is gonna be a shock to you guys, because of a bug. Uh, so Hyper Beam, uh, I don't think the actual like stats of the move have ever changed. It's always been 150 base power. 90 accuracy, but due to a bug in Gen 1, if Hyper Beam knocks out your opponent, you don't have to recharge. And even though that's a bug, I think that's actually how the move should work, uh, because then that makes the move, like, actually high risk, high reward. So if 
if you're, you know, big brain in it and you manage to knock out your opponent, like you, you play your cards right, then you get rewarded. And uh, if your opponent survives, uh, perhaps by like switching into a Pokemon equipped to take it, uh, then uh, you are horribly punished. So in, in Gen 1 only, I would say this is actually meta-defining because everything is using Hyper Beam. Uh, it's ripping through the meta really good. But since then, I think Hyper Beam is actually so bad uh, that I, I would put it as like niche. So where do you use Hyper Beam and all Hyper Beam variants nowadays? Basically, you put them on Gigantamax Pokemon because you don't actually want to use the move. Uh, you just want to use the base power, right? I mean, trainers only care about one thing, and it's disgusting. I think in general, people agree when moves are good or bad, but for some reason, people's brains, like, break when they're talking about Hyper Beam and Hyper Beam clones, and they, like, jump through a zillion hoops. They're, they're using acrobatics without an item to try and justify why Hyper Beam is good. It is awful. The recharge is so bad. I I, I'm dead serious when I say this. I think that Hyper Beam is worse than Splash, because Splash does nothing. Hyper Beam loses you the game in competitive. Like, telling your opponent that I'm doing absolutely nothing the next turn is atrocious. It literally loses you the game. Just use Switch Battle Style, problem solved, yeah. Uh, in game, it's not that bad, because uh, you can switch. Uh, using Switch style. Like, th the only, like, reason you would use Hyper Beam, like, actually use it and not as a G-Max move, or a Gigantamax move, is if you have, like, Adaptability... Uh, Porygon, maybe? Yeah, it's just, it's really bad. Uh, also, people talking about using this thing on slacking, so slacking, to begin with, is a meme, and also it's bad on slacking, because you can switch on your loafing off turn, but you can't switch if you're recharging. So it, it does have a very real downside. It's very bad, guys. You should almost never use it. Honestly, justice for Hyper Beam and Hyper Beam clones. It should be 200 base power, and uh, it should negate recharge if it knocks out the opponent. Like, let's make it high risk, high reward, not uh, okay reward and uh, game losing risk. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough about Hyper Beam. <laughs> Hyper Fang. Uh, as far as filler outclassed moves go, Hyper Fang is pretty good. Uh, specifically on like your early game rats. <laughs> Uh, they get that Hyper Fang and you start chomping. <laughs> you tend to get Hyper Fang pretty early. I think it's 80 base power, uh, 90 accuracy with a flinch chance. And like early on, that's that's pretty good. It's basically headbutt for a different subset of Pokemon. Uh, and later on in the game, you'll just replace it with better moves. It's a Nuzlocke killer. Yeah, it's really dangerous. Because sometimes random enemies will have Hyper Fang and you'll just get destroyed. Hypnosis. Uh, one of the most aggravating moves of all time because it's just RNG on RNG, right? 60% uh, chance to hit, uh, and then, uh, this is our first sleep inflicting move, so in generation one, sleep is crazy overpowered, uh, because the turn you wake up, you actually can't act. Uh, so in gen one, this is probably worth the miss chance, and past then, it is uh, super niche, yeah. I think I'm gonna put it above Confuse Ray, because if you do hit, uh, at least your opponent guaranteed loses a turn, right? But you probably also lost a turn because you probably missed. Quiz for people in the chat. I looked this up ahead of time. Uh, there was one, not even one generation, one game where hypnosis was actually 70% accurate. What game was that? Diamond Pearl, yes. So in Diamond and Pearl only, it was actually 70% accurate, and then they nerfed it in Platinum. <laughs> Why? Just let it be 70% accurate, guys. Actually, actually, that's two games. All right. Guys, I know I said earlier that, like, please well actually me, but I mean, like, for things that matter, okay? Also, not even a hot take. Like, different versions are not different games. It's just a scam, guys. They're 99% the same game. Ice Beam. You guys already know, this thing is one of the best moves ever. Top of staples, for sure. Are you looking for a good Ice... I was gonna say, are you looking for a good ice beam? Then use ice beam. I, <laughs> I messed that up. Are you looking for a good ice move? Then use ice beam. Honestly, this is, like, this like saves the ice. Well, I mean, it doesn't save the ice type because ice type still still sucks. But your consolation prize uh, for being an ice type is being able to use stab ice beam. Really, really good. All right. Honestly, ice ice beam is so good and so ubiquitous. Honestly, we'll put it in meta defining. Because you do have to worry, like, does my opponent have Ice Beam? Maybe they do. 
Probably they do. It's a really good move. Yeah, we'll do a poll. This is the power of the live. We'll do a poll. Ice beam meta or top of staple? One more move and then we'll go back to uh, the ice beam poll. Uh, karate chop. Despite being the most obvious fighting type move ever, in Gen 1 it was actually a normal move. But in Gen 1, it's got the magic text, high critical hit ratio. Well, actually, no moves had text because they didn't have any descriptions, but uh, it, it had it had a high critical hit rate, which meant in Gen 1, it crit. <laughs> uh, so in Gen 1, I would actually put this in like staple because you were if you had karate chop, you were using it, right? <laughs> chop them. Uh, but since then, it's just been a filler, forgettable fighting type move. It's fine. I actually think it's better than these weird like multi hit moves. We'll put it there. Uh, and it got changed to uh, fighting move in Gen 2. Yeah, I don't think anything in Gen 1 actually had stab on Karate Chop, but like Mankey used it, I guess. Mankey and Machop could use it. I think Machamp was actually so slow that you might not reach the auto crit threshold with Karate Chop. Uh, actually, we'll put Karate Chop uh, right below Double Kick. Let's, uh, let's see the poll result for Ice Beam. Wow. Okay, 86% for meta. Okay, Ice Beam is a meta move. A $5 donation from Blue Crimson 217. Name one special attacking water type that doesn't use Ice Beam. That's why it's meta. Yeah. So we just talked about meta. Kinesis. Uh, it's it's the meta for bad moves. Wow. Wow, it's bad. <gasps> wow, it's bad. C can anybody even tell me what Kinesis does? I know what it does. But does does anybody know? You might not know the, the de depths of depravity that is Kinesis. You bend the spoon. Well, that's what it actually does, but I mean the effect. Yeah, it, it lowers accuracy. So remember, remember how bad Flash was? Kinesis is slightly better for some of Pokemon's history. Uh, yeah, it might actually take the title of the worst exclusive move. So we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go through why Kinesis is so bad. So generation one, just lowers accuracy by one. And uh, it's accuracy, the, the accuracy of the move itself has never changed. It's always been 80%. It's not even 100% accurate. So it's strictly worse sand attack as a signature move. I think it's actually worse than Flash. <laughs> That's, oh my God. Cause at least Flash is an HM, right? So you can put it on a lot more Pokemon once it got its accuracy buffed. Uh, also, here's some weeb only tips, okay? I'm keeping you guys safe from fake news. So if you look here, it looks like it says Spoon Mage, which would be an awesome name, right? Uh, but it's actually pronounced Mugget and it just means bend. So don't be deceived. It's not Spoon Mage. It's not that cool. Bad move, guys. Leech Life, uh, one of the greatest glow ups of all time. So Leech Life up until Gen 7, absolutely horrendous. I think it was 15 base power bug type move. Uh, literally worse than Absorb, but massive buff. Uh, in Generation 7, uh, to a company, I guess Galissapod, they went ahead and made Leech Life not only a TM, but they also made it 80 base power. So 80 base power and heals you? That's pretty good. Unfortunately, it's still a bug type move, which means it's not that great. But if you're a bug type and you can learn Leech Life, you are 100% using it. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm actually going to put it like here-ish. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll put it at the bottom of Staples because it was so bad for so long. But nowadays, it is good. Is it the best damaging healing move? I'm sure there's one that's better. It's probably a signature move. Like Oblivion Wing is better, I guess. I guess Dream Eater is better, but you have to combo it. I think most drain moves actually end up being better because uh, Bug is such a Garbo attacking type. Uh, but just in terms of the numbers, uh, 80 base power Leech Life I think puts it 5 base power ahead of other drain moves like uh, Drain Punch or a Giga Drain, although those moves tend to be better because they're not Bug type. My boy Galvantula triggered when you say Bug type moves are bad. I'm sorry buddy, there, there's no... No two ways about it. Bug type moves are very bad. Uh, it's not fair, but they're bad. You say bug is garbage attacking, but X Scissor is spectacular. What's your definition of spectacular? Uh, X Scissor is like okay. It's worse than Leech Life. <laughs> bug as a coverage isn't terrible. It's more that bug Pokemon are bad. Okay, we're gonna uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna put it we're gonna put an end to this. <laughs> Resisted by Fairy, Fighting, Fire, Flying, Ghost. Poison Steel. Oof. 
Oof, and that's the end of that. We're not talking about how good Bug is anymore, okay? I'm not saying it should be that bad. I'm saying it is that bad, okay? I think it should be better. They did Bug types dirty. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. Alright, get it out of your systems now. Leech Seed. Okay, yeah. Leech Seed, Toxic, Toxic, Leech Seed. Uh, okay. Go ahead and spam the chat with your grass type propaganda. I think Leech Seed is actually pretty good. <laughs> I think Leech Seed is actually pretty good. Uh, it's not meta defining, I don't think, but it is good. It's, it's a staple move. I think I'm going to put it uh, here ish? Uh, in game, Leech Seed is pretty terrible. You wouldn't use it just because it's so slow. Uh, but in competitive, Leech Seed is very important. Uh, if you're a defensive grass type, you're Leech Seeding. It's got a very good effect. Uh, it steals 12% of your opponent's HP a turn. Very useful. Uh, now, you might be wondering, because I did talk about how bad Toxic Leech Seed was in game, how it's basically useless. Uh, there's no point where you would actually want to use it over Razor Leaf. Uh, unfortunately, in competitive, it's the same. So for those of you who don't know, what the Toxic Leech Seed, what the Toxic Leech Seed glitch is, is in Gen 1, uh, the incrementing damage of Toxic is also incremented by Leech Seed. So if you apply both to your opponent, they start taking massive damage, and you start healing massive damage in like three turns. The problem with that is that's useless in-game, because you can just Razor Leaf and knock things out in one hit. And it's useless in competitive because, one, your opponent can just switch, and two, Toxic in Gen 1 actually reverts to normal poison if you switch out in Gen 1. Uh, so, Toxic Leech Seed was never good in any context, but it is a fun meme. My anti-grass bias is showing Leech Seed is meta-defining? No way. It's good! But I don't think it's meta-defining, no. This, this is a good comment uh, from Armor L Armadra. Staple is plenty. These people have Ferrothorn PTSD. Yeah. Leer. Uh, we talked about moves that lower opponent stats. I think this goes with Growl. I think it's a little bit worse than Growl. Uh, but Leer. I think the main use of Leer is uh, teaching young kids the word Leer. <laughs> I imagine many of you learned the word Leer from Pokemon. Uh, and uh, you can make jokes about King Lear, the Shakespeare play, uh, using using Lear. It's about it. It's like Growl, except it lowers your opponent's defense, so it's actually not like Growl at all. <laughs> Lear, it sure exists. Yeah. Lick. Uh, the only ghost move in Gen 1 that doesn't have set damage, hilariously, uh, because Gen 1 is such a, such a good game, uh, Lick, instead of being super effective against Psychic, Psychic types are actually immune to it. Wow. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was only 20 base power in Gen 1, and it's since been buffed to 30 base power. Wow. Uh, and it's always had a 30% chance to paralyze. I think because it actually does okay damage, and because I think paralysis is a way bigger effect than just potentially dropping uh, defense or special defense. I think Lick actually goes at like the very bottom of niche. Like I would never use it. Uh, like maybe I think this just counts. If Bubble is here, then Lick is, Lick goes with Bubble. Uh, I think uh, Lick is actually better than Bubble because Paralysis is a way better effect than dropping speed. Yeah, it's a filler ghost move. It's like Astonish. Yeah, it's definitely better than Astonish. Astonish. Paralysis is a pretty big effect as your secondary and a 30% chance is, is pretty big. It's, uh, it's early game filler. You would never use this seriously uh, in the end game or competitive, uh, but you might use it earlier. Constrict tier? No way. Constrict is one third the power of Lick and doesn't have a 30% chance to paralyze. No way. Lick is way better. People saying that Lick should be in the same tier as Constrict, I'm gonna say that doesn't make a lick of sense. <laughs> Next move. Light screen. Really good. I think this is actually useful enough that it goes in staple. And we'll do we'll do reflect at the same time because they're basically the same. Uh, it's just that light screen affects special moves and a reflect uh, stops physical. Well, it doesn't stop them, it reduces them. What makes them, I think, more useful than just boosting your own stats is, of course, the fact that they apply to your entire team. Uh, so if you have the move Light Clay, uh, it actually lasts for 8 turns instead of 5, uh, which is great. 
I don't quite think they're ubiquitous enough to be meta-defining. I mean, yeah, they're- okay, they're both outclassed by Aurora Veil, yeah, but to Aurora Veil, you have to use Hail. Uh, so, <laughs> Ripperoni to your team, because they're all going to be Ice types. In game, these are useless, uh, but in competitive, they're definitely staples. You can expect to see them on quite a few teams, so you should be prepared for them. Uh, in Gen 1, they're basically just Barrier and Amnesia, but bad, because uh, they only apply to you and you can't stack them. But uh, in the series as a whole, they're pretty good. Uh, yeah, if you're holding a Heavy Clay, then the duration only goes down to three turns, so don't use Heavy Clay. Uh, last thing we'll say about Light Screen and Reflect is that you can break them, uh, with Brick Break, uh, and also if you have the Infiltrator ability, you can ignore them, but that's all like pretty niche. Also Psychic Fangs? Do Psychic Fangs break screens? Also Psychic Fangs, apparently a move that not only exists, but also breaks screens. I'll delete my channel after this video, thank you for pointing out the error of my ways. Oh, Defog might also remove screens. Lovely Kiss! Uh, and I guess we'll do Sleep Powder at the same time, because they are the same move, it's just that uh, different Pokémon get them. Uh, so Lovely Kiss and Sleep Powder are both really useful, they're the most widely available- Lovely Kiss isn't, more uh, Sleep Powder is. I think Sleep Powder is actually pretty useful, uh, I'm gonna put it like next to- next to Leech Seed. Just because they have the same effect, uh, I'm gonna put uh, Lovely Kiss and Sleep Powder together. Um, but Sleep Powder is, is available on far more Pokémon. Uh, it's available on like a bunch of grass types, and uh, I think Butterfree gets it with compound eyes, which is nice. It basically makes it into Spore, because you get, I think, 97% accurate. Sleep is really useful, and this is one of the most reliable ways to inflict sleep. I think uh, Dark Void had has 80, which is slightly higher and hits both opponents, but it's also a signature move, and I think they nerfed it. Uh, they, like, ripperoni Dark Void. It's way worse now. Uh, but it used to be really good. Sleep Powder d no longer works on grass types. So, Grass types S tier confirmed because you can't sleep them. Uh, Lovely Kiss has way worse availability than Sleep Powder, uh, but functionally they're the same, and they're both really good. Uh, put Pokemon to sleep three quarters of the time. It's risky, but generally it's worth the risk. Onyx is immune to Lovely Kiss because no one loves it. That's so sad, guys. Can we, can we get some small rocks in the chat? Yeah, so in a way you could say that Lovely Kiss is strictly better because it dodges all the things that block Powder moves. So that's Grass typing, it's Overcoat. Uh, like safety goggles, uh, but Sleep Powder is on way more Pokemon, you're gonna see it way more often, so I think in general it, it's, a, it's a bit better, but they're basically the same. Low kick, more kick moves, kick them! I think this is our fourth kicking move, we got double kick, we got jump kick, we got high jump kick, and now we got low kick. Uh, in generation one it actually was a fighting move, I think it was 60 base power with a flinch chance, and it wasn't even 100% accurate. Uh, gen two I think it was the same, and I don't th I think it was in Gen 3 that they changed it to the low kick we know and love, uh, which is that it now deals damage based on your weight. Uh, and it goes up to 120 base power if you're heavy enough, so it's actually pretty good. There are certain Pokemon that uh, rely on low kick to be covered, so I think it actually does make it into staple. Uh, we'll, we'll put it like here-ish. Uh, an important note about low kick um, and its relation to weight uh, is that, remember that fighting is super effective against uh, rock and steel, right? And what Pokemon tend to be pretty heavy? Rock and steel. <laughs> Which is why I think low kick is actually kind of a good move, otherwise it would be like kind of suspicious. So in Gen 1 and 2, base power 50, accuracy of 90, 30% chance to cause the target to flinch, and then Gens 3 and beyond, it's now perfectly accurate, and it does the calculation based on weight, so it goes from 20 at the low end all the way up to 120 at the high end. Yeah, low kick is based on your opponent's weight. There are moves, there are weight-based moves that are based on your weight. I think Heat Crash and Heavy Slam operate on your weight, so you can actually make sure that they always do a lot of damage, because uh, you can be really heavy. Uh, but I think those also consider your opponent's weight, like you have to be heavier than your opponent. Low kick does not care about your weight at all. Uh, in Gen 1, I'd probably actually make this a filler move. Uh, but Gens 3 and beyond, I think uh, it's used enough that it's it's a low staple. Alright, Meditate. Well, first of all, did you guys know this move existed? And secondly, did you know this was a Gen 1 move? Because I didn't know it was a Gen 1 move. So Meditate, uh, it raises your attack by one stage. It's bad swords dance, you know, it's the, the I guess, butter knife shuffle. But sometimes you have Meditate and nothing... Else. So the question is, does this go in niche or does this go at the very bottom of 
staple. I mean, because if you have it and nothing else, I guess you're going to use it. Oh, we put Amnesia in Barrier Niche? Yeah, let's put it, uh, let's put it here. Uh, it's basically, I think boosting your attack in general is better than boosting your defenses. Uh, and then in Generation 3, I guess, uh, Growlithe would shamelessly rip this move off. I messed up. Uh, in Generation 3, Hound, Houndoom? I messed up again. In Generation 3, Poochiena uh, would shamelessly rip this move off with Howl. Like, I think the only Pokemon who would seriously consider using this is Meditite, I think, the Meditite line, because they get it, but they don't get Sword Stance. So if you're Meditite, you might consider uh, opting for the Butter Knife Shuffle here. Uh, I'll also note that this move is really confusing uh, to Japanese speakers because the Japanese name is uh, Yoga Pose. Um, but the actual Japanese word, uh, Meditate, Meso, is Calm Mind. So in English, it's this move, and in Japanese, it's Calm Mind. Really confusing. <laughs> Where is Yoga Fire? Yoga Fire, Sonic Boom, Gylatine, this is now a... This is now a Street Fighter ripoff stream. Mega Drain. I think we can get this one done pretty quickly. Uh, if Absorb is filler, Mega Drain is slightly better filler. You now get 40 base power, and you get to heal for half the damage you deal. Wow. And in Generation 2, you can eventually get Giga Drain, which eventually gets buffed up to actually being like a staple move. But Mega Drain never gets that buff, unfortunately. Uh, Mega Drain is 75 in Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee, which are some of the worst games in the series. Don't at me. Uh, but it's only 75 in that game because Giga Drain isn't in the game. Mega Kick! Even more kicking moves! Uh, and Mega Punch. Why aren't these fighting moves? Hello? Uh, they're still normal moves to this day. Why? Uh, as far as filler moves go, they're both pretty good. Mega Kick specifically, like, they're good because of when you get them. So in Gen 1, I think right after Mountain Moon, you can get both of these. And Mega Kick has like 120 base power, which is insane for that point in the game. But it's got 70 accuracy, which is uh, really, really worrying. But, I mean, if you hit it, it does a lot of damage. Uh, Mega Punch is, I think, only 80 base power, but it has 80 accuracy. So, like, you can maybe find a use for that. I would say that the extra power of Mega Kick makes it better overall. Uh, but they're both pretty heavily outclassed by better moves you get later. For the time you get them, I think we'll put them actually above, like, Horn Attack here. Uh, and past Generation 1, uh, they actually get a lot worse, because you can just get, like, Return and stuff. And you never get these uh, at the same, like, crazy useful early point in the game ever again. And you would never, ever, ever use either of these in competitive ever. So, strictly as in-game filler moves for the power spike they give you. Uh, we can put him in filler outclassed. Oh, Mega Punch you get in Mount Moon? Mega Kick you get in Victory Road? Is that true? Oh, and in Fire Red, it's after Mount Moon for both together. Okay. Uh, if, you're a, if you're a big Clefable fan, a Mega Punch Clefable is really good in-game in Gen 3. Before it became a fairy type. Uh, Metronome. Uh, if, there, if there was a meme tier, this would be absolute, you know, top of that. Metronome is an absolute meme. <laughs> it, 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 it's very fun, but I mean... You can get the best moves in the game, you can get the worst moves in the game, you can get anything in between, you have no idea. In terms of fun, one of the best moves in the game, in terms of actually being usable or used by anyone, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I do think it's better than Constrict, because uh, in every instance except for one, I guess the instance where you get Constrict, Metronome is better than Constrict. Uh, also, Metronome, I think, is a terrible translation, because the Japanese is just finger wag, which tells you exactly what it does. Like, guys, I know I know what an actual metronome is. I'm just saying that it doesn't really make sense as a name for, like, what the move does. Yeah, if anything, it's, like, the exact opposite, because metronomes, the whole point of a musical metronome is that it's steady, whereas this move does literally anything. It's the opposite of steady. Awful name. Mimic. Mimic was actually very useful in Gen 1 because what it did was it actually let, let you select which move to copy from your opponent's move. So what it told you what moves your opponent had, and then it let you choose one. Probably a move that you didn't learn because Gen 1 movesets were like really restricted and bad. Past Gen 1, how it now works is that it copies the last move that your opponent used. I don't know when you would use this, but there probably is some instance out there where you would. So that's like, I think a low niche tier move. Uh, I guess you need it to evolve Mime Jr. and Bonsley, but that doesn't count. 
Mimic in Gen 1 only, I would probably say is even a staple move. Tons of things use Mimic, uh, but after that, no. So I think bottom of niche is where it goes overall in the series. Minimize. I think Minimize is strictly worse double team. We put double team here, so we'll put Minimize here. Uh, the issue with Minimize and why it's strictly worse than double team is that certain moves like Body Slam, Stomp, uh, Dragon Rush, Heat Stamp, basically like the, the crushing moves, <laughs> uh, ignore the Minimize evasion boost and actually deal double damage to you. So it's like a neat interaction, but because of that, it makes it makes it just strictly worse than double team, which doesn't have that mechanic. Is minimized double evasion boost now? Really? Oh yeah, since Gen 5, it's actually double evasion. Okay. Uh, so I guess considering that it's double evasion and uh, the moves that ignore it are so rare, I think we'll actually go ahead and put it above double team. But these moves are strictly for in-game gimmicks because you can't even use them in competitive. They're banned. Oh, you can use them in VGC? Oh, okay. Does anybody actually use it? Oh, max moves also are guaranteed hits? Okay. All right, mirror move. Another very weird translation. So mirror move is a flying move. Mirror move doesn't tell you that, but in Japanese, it's literally parrot mimicry, which makes a lot of sense, right? And that's why a bunch of bird type Pokemon, bird type, a bunch of bird Pokemon get this. So mirror move, where does it go? It's, I guess, it's kind of like mimic. <laughs> Uh, where it just copies the last move your opponent does. Is that useful? Not really. You don't want to use your opponent's moves. You want to use your moves. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't think it's useless, but uh, we'll put it like below Mimic. I think Mimic in general is actually more useful. The move translation tier list when? Uh, someday, actually. It won't be all moves. It'll just be moves that I think have interesting or bad translations. That's definitely going to happen sometime. I actually did. I already have a video on my channel about... Um, Moves that I think make more sense in Japanese. Mist. What does this move actually do? It prevents your stats from being lowered. Is that ever worth spending a turn to do? Uh, no. No. Uh, this is about as good as the character mist in Fire Emblem 10 Radiant Dawn, which is to say, it's very bad. Uh, in fact, I think this is actually mostly useless. I don't know why you would use mist. And put it, uh... Put it here. It's bad. <laughs> Mist is the German word for dung. That says it all. Sounds good to me. Mist in Fire Emblem 9? Actually, okay, because she's the only one who can help Ike in the Black Knight fight, which is kind of useful. And unlike uh, Roll for, you know, Raffle, who's completely useless because he has to fight, Mist can, like, hang back and heal, promote her at 10. It's okay. Uh, in Fire Emblem 10? Awful. Where'd her horse go? Hey, that's enough about Fire Emblem. You can use Z-Mist to uh, fully heal yourself and prevent stat changes. Is that worth your item and your Z-Crystal for your entire team? I don't think so, no. And since we just mentioned Z-Move Mist, we'll also talk about Z-Move Mirror Move in that it gives you a Swords Dance boost and then copies your opponent's last move and uses the Z version of that. I That's like an ultra gimmick, right? Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, Ultra gimmick. <laughs> because you don't know what move your opponent's gonna use. If Tapu Fini sometimes use Z Mist, well, we'll move it to the very top of mostly useless. Uh, because on one Pokemon in one game, if you use a specific item, it's okay. You know what you did missed? You missed these nuts. All right, that's enough. Nightshade. Actually, very, very useful. Nightshade, I think we're going to go ahead and put... Uh, it's definitely a, a staple move. Uh, Nightshade, I think we're going to put it here-ish? Yeah, this is about where useful damaging moves go. So Nightshade does damage... Uh, equal to your level. In in game, this is, you know, not that useful, but definitely a competitive staple. Uh, because in competitive, you're all level 50 or level 100. Uh, and that set amount of damage is very useful for Pokemon, specifically defensive Pokemon, uh, that don't have attacking stats that are, you know, worth using real moves with, but still want to do steady, reliable damage. So Nightshade uh, doesn't affect normal types uh, because it is a ghost move. We'll also do Seismic Toss, I guess, because they're the same. I think Seismic Toss is... A little bit worse, uh, because it doesn't affect ghosts, uh, and ghosts are, I think, overall a little bit stronger than normal types, eventually, like in, in the modern game. Uh, but you could argue for either of these above the other. I think they're both, like, very good. Very solid offensive options for defensive Pokemon. Also, when I was a kid, uh, this was my first time seeing the word seismic, 
and the the announcer in Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, he says Seismic Toss, which I think is just wrong. I don't think that's an accent thing. He's wrong, right? I'm not crazy. Nobody says Seismic Toss. It's Seismic, for sure. People make fun of him for saying Giovanni wrong. He says Giovanni. But is that how you actually say it? Is Giovanni correct? So actual Italians confirming in the chat, stop making fun of the announcer for saying Giovanni. Giovanni is correct, but Seismic is not. It's me again, voiceover imported cheese. While editing the premium, I realized that I never actually talked about payday and nobody in the chat mentioned it, so I guess it wasn't that important, huh? But you, viewer, have the power to add payday to this list. Just evolve into a mighty Patreon and join the Discord using the links in the description. Thanks. For real, I'd probably put Payday next to like Pound and Scratch as like a filler normal move. Uh, the money it earns you really is a pittance. It's not really worth anything. But it is neat that there's a move that prints money. Heck! This should be pretty easy. Uh, it's your early game filler flying move. It's fine. Where we put Gust, we'll put Heck right there with Gust. You could swap these. It wouldn't matter. We'll put Gust above it, uh, because if your opponent is flying when you hit him with a Gust, they take double damage. Wow, incredible. Petal Dance! It used to be pretty bad. Uh, they buffed it a lot throughout the generations. In Generation 1, it's really underwhelming. I think it's only like 80-ish base power. Certainly not worth the drawback of being locked into it for 2-3 to three turns and then suffering confusion. But they've since buffed it. It's now 120 base power, so if you're litigant, uh, you start with a quiver dance, and then you start pedal dancing, and stuff goes down. Yeah, it's grass type outrage. It's pretty good. I think it's definitely a staple. I think nowadays I'm gonna put it uh, here, here-ish. We'll put it with uh, with double edge. Uh, so 120 base power with a significant drawback. The power is actually worth the drawback in most cases. Ah, you're right. I think it's worse than the it's worse than the punches. I uh, will also put crab hammer below the punches. What? <laughs> Better than Outrage, though, since Grass is greater than Dragon. Is that bannable? That might be bannable. Don't say that again. Pin Missile! Uh, always kind of mediocre, but very recently actually became a very Chad move. Because you actually use this on Skill Link Mega Heracross to delete your opponent. <laughs> uh, Pin Missile in Generation 1 you could actually use on Jolteon for the memes it was never really that good, but... It is an option. I mean, what else are you going to run on that thing? Gen 1 movesets were very barren. Uh, but if Mega Heracross is in the game, you are pin missling them. Uh, so I think pin missile, because of its use on Mega Heracross, who is a good Pokemon, you do run this on that. I think it goes, uh, where are the other? I, mean, I think we'll put it with Leech Life, right? Uh, it's very similar where it's a bug type move that started out horrible. or Not horrible, but like pretty bad. Okay, actually, it's definitely better than Leech Life. Uh, <laughs> Started out horrible, uh, and then had a big glow up. Pin Missile Jolteon was the only way to deal super effective damage on Psychics without being weak to it. Uh, that's true, but it's also like not that useful, right? Like, remember that super effective just means double damage, right? It doesn't mean your opponent's faint. So in general, you're better off just using a strong neutral move as opposed to a weak super effective move. All right, fine. We'll put we'll put it in niche. If you're Mega Heracross, this is really good. If not, it's niche. How's that? Oh wait, but we have the we have the filler we have the terrible multi-hit moves here in filler outclassed, right? Pin missile is at least as good as those, right? But it's way better because you can actually use it on Mega Heracross and not be a joke. We're putting it back in staple under Leech Life. Pin missile is useless now because Mega Heracross is gone. Megas will be back someday, okay? As a Charizard fan, believe it. Top of filler? Okay, how about that? We'll We'll put it with Bone Meringue, top of filler. It's definitely better than these multi-hit moves. Poison Gas. Holy moly, this move is bad. This move is so bad. You guys, you guys don't even know how bad this move is. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna read it to you. It should be illegal for a move to be this bad. Generations 1 to 4. Poison Gas poisons the target and has an accuracy of 55%. I think I can just stop reading there, but I'll keep going. Poison Gas targets one Pokemon in doubles battles. Wow. Generation 5, Poison Gas's accuracy has increased to 80% and now targets all adjacent opponents in double and triple battles. Generation 6 onwards, Poison Gas's accuracy changed from 80 to 90%. 55% chance to do 12% damage a turn to your opponent. 
45% chance to do absolutely nothing for four generations. Uh, yes, it got buffed, but even now that it's buffed, would you ever use this? No. <laughs> no. I don't have much hope for Toxic. Keep that comment in mind. Poison Powder! Well, it's definitely better than Poison Gas. <laughs> uh, but by how much? Well, there is a big difference in accuracy, at least earlier. I guess nowadays, Poison Powder is worse than Poison Gas. Uh, because you have lower accuracy and uh, you also- it's a powder, so it doesn't affect grass types. It's pretty bad. Uh, but it's definitely better than Poison Gas overall, I'd say. Hypnosis is up here at the top of niche, but sleep is, in general, a far more powerful effect than normal poison. So I think we're gonna go ahead and put Poison Powder one step above Poison Gas. Because Poison Gas is better nowadays, but Poison Powder was better for most of Pokemon, and they're both pretty bad. But what about Compound Eyes Poison Powder? So now you can guaranteed inflict 12% damage a turn. Why are you wasting your time like that? No. Poison Sting. Uh, one of the poster childs for bad moves. <laughs> uh, but hey, it's... Has a chance to poison. Put it here. Uh, I think it's only 15 base power, which is pretty pathetic. Uh, but if you're Weedle, I mean, what else are you going to use? I think for an early game filler move, at least you have the upside of poisoning. And doing like a little bit of damage. Did this get buffed to 50% chance to poison? It was 20% in Gen 1. And then it got buffed to 30%. It's still bad though. But I think unlike Poison Gas and Poison Powder, there are points in the game where you would have Poison Sting as your best option and you would use it. Sure. Uh, also worth noting that uh, it's 30% chance against enemies, and of course it's 100% chance against you. Pound! Uh, can you say filler? <laughs> uh, pretty much the definition of an early filler move? Uh, very good for memes, you can talk about taking things to, you know, Pound Town, but I mean, does that actually affect its ranking? Not really, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and put it, uh, put it here. And we'll also go ahead and uh, we'll do Scratch and uh, Tackle at the same time here, right? So Pound and Scratch, I think, are actually the exact same. It's just 40 base power, 100 accuracy, and they're better than Tackle, or at least they used to be. So Tackle, actually, kind of interesting. So we're going to talk about the history of Tackle because it actually has been changed. I think it's one of the only moves ever to have been buffed and then nerfed. So Tackle up until Gen 4 is the Tackle that we know, and I don't know if we love, but we definitely know it, where it was 35 base power and 95% accuracy. And then in Generations 5 and 6, they buffed it. They said, we're going to make it 50 base power and 100 accuracy. And then they decided, you know what? That's just too much power to give you in the early game. We're knocking it back down to 40. So now it has parity with Scratch and Pound. Such a tumultuous history uh, for a move that you're going to delete as soon as you can. Oh, I guess Hypnosis got buffed and nerfed, yeah. As a kid, I thought Pound was good because in Spanish translation, it's called Destructor. That's hilarious. <laughs> so Pound has always been 40 base power, 100 accuracy. So for two generations, five and six, uh, Tackle was actually the best among the Pound Scratch Tackle crew. Fun fact by Armor L. Armadura, Tackle is the move learned by the most Pokemon. Wow, talk about availability. Is that true? Like even considering TMs? Or just by, by level up? Another Italian translation error. Uh, so Pound was translated to Libra, which is the unit of measurement for weight in Pounds. That's pretty funny. Psybeam. This one I think is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's, I believe, strictly better than Confusion, except for PP, so we're just gonna put it right above Confusion. And we'll just make sure you can actually see that on the screen. There we go. <laughs> I think that's fine. Uh, in fact, we'll put it we'll put it ahead of uh put ahead of bite. Confusion, but gooder. Yeah. Psychic. I think another terrible translation because. Why would you have a move that's the same name as a type? Like, imagine if there was a water type move just called water. Uh, in Japanese, this is closer to, like, psychokinesis. Like, actually using your mind to, like, move things. Uh, psychic in Gen 1? Yeah, obviously... Ultra-meta-defining. 
uh, did a bunch of damage, and it had a 30% chance to drop special, which again in Gen 1 was both your special attack and defense, so absolutely insane. Since then, it's just been a very good staple move, right? It kind of goes with Flamethrower, it's definitely not as good as Flamethrower, uh, but it's in that crew of pretty much best move of its type, right? Why is it not as good as Flamethrower? Because Flamethrower is a much better offensive move, it hits way more relevant types. Uh, why does Steel resist Psychic? Because Steel is overpowered. That That's the only explanation I have. Uh, that's, why not, right? They just made it resist everything, right? It, it's a major flavor fail to have Steel resist Psychic because you can use Psychic powers to bend spoons which are made of Steel. Come on, Game Freak, fix your game. Okay, guys. I try to keep the channel, you know, PG-13. Uh, but... The younger among you might want to leave the room, okay? Psywave is unspeakably bad, okay? It's it's unspeakably bad, but because my setup is kind of sus and you can't really read the details, I am going to have to speak about Psywave. Are you ready? You might not be ready. Generation 1, Psywave inflicts a random amount of damage varying between one damage and 1.5% the user's level. Wow. Generation 2. Psywave inflicts a random amount of damage varying between 1 HP and 1.5 times the user's level. The damage is always rounded down, not even rounded up. However, don't worry, because Psywave will always deal at least 1 HP of damage. Wow. Generations 3 and 4, the formula changes a little bit. Uh, it's important to note that the calculation can result in zero, but don't worry, they won't let it do zero damage, it'll at least do one. And this entire time, up to Generation 6, it's not even 100% accurate, it's 80. But don't worry guys, they buffed it, it's now 100% accurate. Honestly, this might go in the Constrict Crucible. I, I think it's better than Constrict because most of the time, it'll do more than Constrict, but... Wow. Please tell me this god-awful move has been removed in Sword and Shield. It might still be in the game, guys. They removed it! Okay. So, Game Freak has some mercy. They took it out in Gen... Gen 8, so... Actually, maybe Gen 8's not that bad, guys. They got rid of Psywave. <laughs> uh, but for as bad as Psywave is, I think the average result is still more damage than Constrict. But... Good lord, is it bad. Quick attack! Surprisingly useful? So it's a priority move, and some people might not know exactly what that means. So usually, your turn order is decided by your speed stat. Most moves in the game have zero priority, so it just calculates off of speed. But, certain moves have increased or decreased priority. Priority pretty much overrides everything. So, a slow Pokémon using quick attack Compared to a fast Pokemon using a move with zero priority, Quick Attack will go first. If you both have the same priority, uh, then your speed stats actually matter. So Quick Attack, pretty weak at only 40 base power, but I think it, it's good enough to go like near the top of filler outclassed. Despite the fact that certain moves here like, you know, Headbutt, Hyper Fang, and Dig are generally better, because there are certain Pokemon, uh, especially Pokemon that have a Technician, like Technician Scyther, that actually run Quick Attack. Quick Attack is not that bad. Having a priority move is very, very useful. But as far as priority moves go, Quick Attack is the worst one. Uh, yeah, you can use it on the Fear Radita set, which is a Radita that uses uh, Focus Sash or like Endure to survive at 1 HP, uses Endeavor to drop the opponent to 1 HP, and then Quick Attacks to hit them for 1 HP and knock them out, but that is a pure meme. <laughs> like, this is not good. Yeah, I think Quick Attacks... Quick Attack would be, like, much lower in filler, but because it is sometimes used in competitive, I think it elevates it a little bit up to filler outclassed. Not quite to staples, I think that's fair. If you are a Pokemon that has an 8 ability, like Aerial 8, specifically Aerial 8 Pinsir, uh, Quick Attack is very good because it becomes a flying type move and uh, gets a power boost. And goes first, because it's Quick Attack. Rage. Wow. Uh, so Rage in Generation 1 might actually be the worst move of all time, because how it worked was you selected Rage, it's 20 base power, normal move, and it just repeats forever. You will continue to use Rage 
until you faint. If you get hit while using rage, your attack increases. Wow, but you can still only use rage. Uh, rage is notable because you can use it to softlock yourself against Lorelei. Uh, and also, we haven't talked about it yet, but in Generation 1, there's what's called the, uh, the Gen 1 miss. So 100% accurate moves can actually miss due to a glitch. They have a 1 in 256 chance to miss. And if you miss with rage, its accuracy inverts. So instead of 255 and 256 chance to hit, you actually have a 255 and 256 chance to miss. Absolutely insane how that happens. Wow. Possibly the worst move in the franchise, considering only Gen 1. But since Gen 2, it has been elevated from atrocious to niche usage. So in Generation 2, Rage is actually really important. It's, it's part of the speed run <laughs> uh, because you use it on Totodile, where now uh, if you get hit after you Rage, you can select other moves afterwards. But if you get hit after using Rage, your attack goes up, which is fine. It's actually kind of useful in that sense. Uh, you'd still never use it outside of that speedrun context, but it's something. Uh, and just getting a generic attack boost, you can kind of think of it as a meditate that actually has base power that does some damage if you get hit. So definitely saved by updates past Gen 1. Razor Leaf! OPOP OP in Generation 1 because it is a high crit move, and high crit moves in Gen 1 basically always crit. Uh, so Razor Leaf is actually so good in Generation 1 that it not only defeats the Toxic Leech Seed meme, but if you want to beat Generation 1 using only the A button, Razor Leaf is a key part of that very specific run. Uh, so in Generation 1, I would actually consider this like a staple move really, really good, but we've got seven other generations where Razor Leaf is unfortunately a very solid filler move. I uh, will put it uh, put it put it right about here, right next to Bone Club. How about that? We'll put it above Bone Club because more people use Razor Leaf. Definitely above Aurora Beam. No, Aurora Beam's better. It's a uh, it's a nice type move. R guys, remember Gra Razor Leaf is still a grass type move, which is unfortunate. So I mean, a a F's in the comments, or I guess this is a live stream, right? Uh, F's in the live stream or salutes for Auto Crit Razor Leaf. No longer in the game, but it was great while it lasted. Uh, Razor Wind. Wow, this thing's bad. Uh, it, it's kind of unreal how bad this move is. So not only is the move bad, but it's also a waste of a really cool move name. So Razor Wind in Japanese is Kamaitachi, uh, which is like sickle, a uh, weasel. Like that's the combination of words. Uh, it's basically like, to put it in simpler Westerner terms, it's kind of like the Tasmanian devil, like the whirling dervish, <laughs> where it like spins in a whirlwind. That's what it is. Uh, so I, I don't know why this isn't a flying type move. It's so bad, guys. Like you might not realize how bad it is off the top of your head. Uh, you don't have to realize because I'm going to tell you. So in Generation 1, Razor Wind does nothing on the turn it is selected other than saying Pokemon made a Whirlwind. On the following turn, Razor Wind inflicts damage, PP is deducted, and it will count as the last move used. Once Razor Wind is selected, the user will be unable to switch out until Razor Wind has been disrupted or fully executed. Accuracy in this generation is 75%. Huh! Generation 2, Razor Wind now has an increased critical hit ratio, thanks. Generation 3, Razor Wind now has an accuracy of 100. It has no increased critical hit ratio, so they nerfed it. Okay. Generations 4 to 7, they again gave it a critical hit ratio. Thanks. And in Generation 8, they removed it. So all of this, remember, is on a move that takes two turns. So it's really strong, right? 80 base power. Yeah, this is, uh, this is bad. I think it's better than Bide, because at least it only takes one turn, right? Yeah, for context, if this took one turn, it would be bad. <laughs> and that's enough of that. Alright, after the debacle that was Razor Wind, let's recover. Recover's a very good move. Very good move. Uh, in game, it's not that useful because you can just use like potions or whatever. You, you'd rather not use a move slot on it. But in competitive, having a reliable way to restore your health, like with recover, is very good. Where do we put this? Uh, this is pure utility. Uh. Maybe like below, below the punches, maybe? It's definitely a staple. Recover's very good. If you have Recover and you're a defensive Pokemon, you're probably using it. 
Yeah, I guess while we're doing Recover, we'll also do Soft Boiled because they're basically the same. They're just available on different Pokemon. So Soft Boiled, another really weird translation because like, Soft Boiled? Like, are you cooking? What does this mean? Uh, in Japanese, it's literally Egg Lay, uh, which is why you get it on like Chansey, uh, the... Not actually on the uh, Executor line. It's not on there, but I think Mew can get it as well because it can just learn everything and Soft Boiled was a TM. They're functionally the same. Uh, although Soft Boiled actually uh, has extra use outside of battle, where you can use a Soft Boiled to transfer HP uh, to other party members. That's not really that useful, just use potions. <laughs> Would you like an egg in this trying time? That line has now appeared in both of the tier lists. Yeah, I guess you can use Chansey, I was pointing out, you can use Chansey as an HP battery. So you just give Chansey's HP to other Pokemon and then use a full restore on Chansey. But like money is not a concern in Pokemon games. You get so much and there's really nothing to spend it on aside on like restoratives. All right, this is the first I'm hearing of that. Soft Boiled has a very weird Spanish translation. It translates to Amortiguador, I, I did my best there, which is a car's shock absorber. Wow, I didn't know that. Rest. So rest, generally kind of useful. In generation two, it was insane, specifically because of the interaction between rest and sleep talk in that generation. So in generation two only, if sleep talk hit rest, it would actually heal you. Uh, but after gen two, they changed it so that uh, if you rest using sleep talk while already asleep, it just doesn't do anything. Rest is pretty useful. Um, generally, in competitive, when you use rest, you're not expecting to actually stay asleep. You'll combine it with a Chesto Berry, which uh, wakes you up immediately. And why you would use a Chesto Berry rather than a Lum Berry, which can cure any status, is because uh, you only want it to cure sleep, right? Because if somebody burns you or poisons you, you can cure that with rest and then wake up instantly using Chesto Berry. Rest, I think, is actually, because of that, it, it shows up from time to time in competitive. Uh, we'll put it like here-ish, I think. I think because it was so good in Gen 2, like it defined, it was part of defining Gen 2 along with Curse and Sleep Talk, we'll put it here-ish. You don't see it that often nowadays, but you do see it occasionally. It's not a meme at all. It's it's a very legit move that people use. Uh, in game, it's kind of useless. Chesto Besto. I mean, I don't know about Besto, but it's pretty good. Chesto Pesto. Resto Chesto Asbestos. All right, all the people making Resto Chesto jokes, give it a rest. Roar! We'll do Roar with Whirlwind because they're basically the same. We talked about these a bit when we talked about Haze. So these sort of have a similar effect to Haze, kind of. Uh, because swapping out, forcing your opponent to swap out, essentially removes their stat boosts, right? Uh, both, yeah, I would say both are staples. Uh, they are both very, very useful in a competitive context. Uh, In-game, they're basically useless. We'll put Roar and Whirlwind together. I think Whirlwind is still a normal move, which is kind of weird. Uh, and in Japanese, I think it's Fukitwasu, which means blow away, which is why there's that one episode where I think Ash tells Bulbasaur to use Whirlwind and he just like blows away some like spores or something. Uh, I think Whirlwind is actually strictly better than Roar because soundproof Pokemon uh, dodge Roar, uh, but they still get hit by Whirlwind. It's very dangerous when your opponent in competitive sets up and to stop them from doing that, just force them out using Whirlwind or Roar and they'll also take damage from entry hazards uh, if you've set those up. Why is Haze so low? Because why would you use Haze when you can use these moves which are generally better? Also way more Pokemon get Whirlwind and Roar. I guess one way that Haze is better than these two is that Whirlwind and Roar are both negative priority, like mega negative priority. like. Quick Attack is plus one. These two moves are uh, minus six. <laughs> uh, so they are almost always uh, going last. But generally, that doesn't really matter. Uh, most Pokemon that are using these moves tend to be defensive, and they're going to be going second anyway. Rock Slide and Rock Throw. Do you guys know these are the only Rock-type moves in Generation 1? That's crazy. I thought there were more, but no. Uh, so we'll just do Rock Throw first because it's easier. So Rock Throw in Gen 1 is hilariously bad. Uh, and you will laugh at this. It's so bad for s no reason. So you'll see here that Rock Throw in Generation 1, 50 base power and an accuracy of 65. Why? 
<laughs> Why'd they make it so bad? Uh, and then in Gen 2, they came to their senses and made it 90 accuracy, which is fine. So Rock Throw, I think, is, is definitely a fine filler outclassed move. We'll put, we'll put it with Ember, right? It's in that category of use it early game when you have nothing better, swap it out later. Uh, I think it being so hilariously bad in Gen 1, I, I mean, we can't really count that against it that much. Uh, you weren't going to use it anyway. Is it any coincidence that Onyx gets both Rage and Rock Throw? I think not. Yeah, they really they really went all in to cement, you know, Rock type, uh, cement Onyx's status as absolute garbage in Gen 1. Yeah, more like Rock throwing the game. Okay, that, that that's a... It's a good line to end on. Rock Slide. Good move. I think if we're talking about singles only, Rock Slide would go in, uh, you know, like about like the middle of staples, maybe. Uh, but, like, considering, I think, how insane Rock Slide is in doubles, uh, it's going to go in meta defining. Because if you're in a double battle, get, get ready to get Rock Slid. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Rock Slide hits both your opponents in doubles, and it has a 30% flinch chance. So if you're in a doubles battle, you're about to get hit by Rock Slide. <laughs> so I think in Gen 1, uh, Rock Slide only had a 10% chance to flinch. It did exist. Uh, then in Gen 2, they buffed it up to 30%. So in singles, I would probably put it like mid staples in general. You, you would just use Rock or uh, Stone Edge. Uh, but in doubles, yeah, it's get ready to slide. <laughs> Gen 1 could not flinch. I thought that too, but then I looked it up yesterday and it says that it did. We'll check this right now. Prepare to get destroyed, chatter. Generation 1, Rock Slide deals damage with no additional effect. Okay, I was wrong. Okay, well there's a lot of you, okay, and there's only one of me. So, on average, one of you will eventually get something right. Uh, thank you for correcting me. Yes, uh, it had no flinch chance in Gen 1. Oh my god, the recoil damage of trying to attack a chatter, I'm sorry. Rolling Kick. Yet another kick! Yeah, I think you and Scott in the chat put it correctly. Fun fact, rolling kick is a move. <laughs> uh, if you're Gen 1 Hitmonlee and you have nothing else to do, I guess you're using rolling kick. It's definitely a filler outclassed move. It's not bad, I think it's like 60 base power with a chance to flinch. It might not be perfectly accurate though. 85% accurate with a 30% chance to flinch. Oh, okay. Uh, why in the world they called this rolling kick instead of roundhouse kick? I'm guessing is for space reasons, like maybe they couldn't fit roundhouse kick in. I think somebody mentioned it. Uh, there's literally more kick moves than there are rock type moves. Hilarious. Dude, Hitmonlee has like three signature moves in Gen 1. He's he's rolling kicking you, he's jump kicking you, and then he's high jump kicking you. Prepare to get kicked. None of them for that much damage in particular. F's in the chat for <laughs> Gen 1 fighting types. All rock type moves have rock in the name. Yeah, in Gen 1 they do, and all electric type moves start with thunder. All of them. <laughs> okay, sand attack. This one should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we have growl and leer here in niche, and we're gonna put sand attack, I think, right above those. I think as far as, like, filler stat reducing moves, sand attack is pretty useful, because even with one sand attack, you're already giving your opponent a chance to miss, which can then mean you can sand attack them more. So if you're trying to do cheese, uh, sand attack is a good way to do that. Uh, notably, uh, every single Pokemon player ever has the shared trauma of getting sand attacked into oblivion at some point by enemy AI. <laughs> that's, that's the real use of sand attack. Uh, why is it above flash? Because flash is not 100% accurate, which is crazy. Or at least it wasn't at the beginning, it's been buffed. I think at the time Sand Attack came out, Pocket Sand was not a thing. Uh, but yes, nowadays you can always yell POCKET SAND when using Sand Attack. Uh, also, Sand Attack in Gen 1 was a normal move. Nowadays, it's a ground type move, but it can still affect flying types. So it's just a ground type move for flavor, I guess? Last comment about Sand Attack. So Sand Attack is meta-defining for the AI trainer meta. Yes, that is true. SCREECH! Uh, so I think Screech goes with the other moves that lower stats. Uh, I think it does two stages, whereas Leer does only one stage, but Screech is also, I think, inaccurate. I, I don't think it's 100% accurate. Uh, no, it's always been 85% accurate, so you basically have to weigh your options, right? Like, do you want to lower defense by one stage for sure, or do you want to probably lower defense by two? Neither of those effects are that powerful. 
Uh, the in-game ear assault is a perk of the move. I don't know if I'd call it a perk. Sharpen uh, is a move that exists. It's one of Porygon's like eight signature moves. He doesn't actually have eight, but he has a ton. He's got like conversion, conversion two <laughs> and sharpen. Uh, I think sharpen just increases your attack by one stage. So where's meditate? We'll put it with meditate. If powered up by, by Normalium Z, the user's attack rises by another stage. So yeah, if you use your item and your Z crystal, it just becomes Swords Dance. We'll put it next to Meditate. Sing! Do we sing this entire entry or no? Sing! 55 accuracy. Normal move. Put your opponent to sleep. It's worse than hypnosis in every way, but hypnosis is okay. There you go. Sing like Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff has a really high voice and I don't. It's so bad. I, I'm, I'm stopping. I mean, Sing is only 5 accuracy less than Hypnosis. But for some reason, 55 just feels so much worse than 60. Oh, $5 donation for Be My BFF. More Jigglypuff singing, please. Okay. Jigglypuff, Jiggly, Jigglypuff. That's not so bad, right? You could fall asleep to that. Please don't fall asleep during my streams. All right, Skull Bash. Another terrible translation, because the Japanese is Rocket Headbutt, which is way cooler. And we got Skull Bash. Okay, well, so I think in Gen 1, you didn't actually get a defense boost during the charging turn. Uh, since then, you do. So where did we put the defense boost moves? I think it's better than those, because eventually you do deal damage, but man, is this underwhelming. Uh, are you really going to use two turns to... I think on the second turn, it does deal 130 base damage and the defense boost. I, I, I don't think it goes to filler or outclass. Like, two turn moves are really bad, guys. <laughs> uh, Skull, Skull Bash did get buffed. I think it used to be 100, and now it's 130. So, I mean, that's decent. That's decent power, but again, like, average that over two turns, and that's just so much worse than return. I don't think that the defense boost is worth it. Uh, if it raised both your attack and your defense, yeah, it would be pretty... I don't know about pretty good, but it would be usable. I thought Skull Bash was water type for like 20 years. Yeah, because it's always on like Blastoise. Power Herb makes it a one-turn move. Yeah, but that's not worth it, because that's your item. Sky Attack. Uh, this thing has gotten an insane amount of buffs. Like, they just kept tacking on criteria to it to hopefully make it good. A spoiler, it didn't work. But as far as two-turn moves go, Sky Attack is actually not that bad. Which isn't saying much, but here we go. So Sky Attack, another nerfed translation because the Japanese is Godobado, God Bird. Wow, how did we get Sky Attack? Probably because they didn't want to like uh, have any religious al illusions. Extreme Speed in Japanese is actually God Speed as well, so uh, they nerfed that. So God Bird, how good is it? Ah, uh, not so good. So uh, Generation One, I think its base power was 140, which hey, that's not bad. Then. Generation 3, they added a 30% chance for it to flinch, and they added a high crit rate. In Let's Go Eevee, they bumped it up to 200 base power, and then in Generation 8, they knocked it back down to 140. You get a 140 base power move with high crit rate and a flinch chance, and also an awesome animation in the stadium games. It's a, you, like, turn into, like, a fire god and, like, slam into them. Really cool. Is that worth two turns? Uh, no. But I think there's enough upside uh, that it's definitely better than Skull Bash. I, I think I would maybe put it, uh, put it here-ish. Yeah, Sky Attack is not nearly as good as Brave Bird. There's no comparison. Brave Bird is like top of staples. Brave Bird is amazing. Uh, so Brave Bird's better than God Bird's. Wow. This really is a JRPG where bravery beats deities. Slam. Come on and slam. And welcome to Outclassed. I think this is actually worse than Dragon Rage. I think actually considering how garbage Slam is, because these moves like Pound, Scratch, Tackle, Gust, Peck, uh, not so much Mega Drain, but Lick, Poison Sting, Bubble, like you're using these at the beginning of the game, right? Because uh, you have no other options, and in that context, I don't think it's fair to call them like bad moves, right? You gotta use something. Slam tends to be fairly late game, and it's just atrocious. Like, why is this move so bad? 80 base power? So it's gotta be 100% accurate, right? 75 accuracy. Does it flinch them? No. Does it paralyze them? No. Like, it's treated as if it has an upside, and it doesn't. Slam, bam, no thank you ma'am. Bad. But, I mean, at least it does damage 75% of the time. Yeah, streamer slams move for being bad. Slash. It's a high crit move, 
So in Gen 1 and Gen 1 only, it was a very Chad move because it auto crit and did a ton of damage. Past then, uh, it's just a very mediocre filler move. I think I'm just going to put it with uh, Headbutt and Hyperfang. I think it's actually worse than those uh, because the high crit rate upside is not as good as a uh, flinching is what I would say. There you go. Sad times for Slash, but at least in the OG generation, it was pretty good. Uh, Sludge. Probably the best, uh, not probably, it is the best uh, damage dealing poison move in Gen 1. Wow. Bad. <laughs> Bad. I mean, Acid is down here, right? It's better than Acid. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, this this move just has no home, because in Generation 2, you get Sludge Bomb as a TM, and that's what you're gonna, you're gonna be using forever. And, Poison is arguably the worst offensive type in the entire game, so... To be a usable Poison move, you gotta be really good, or you gotta be, like, your only other option in early game, right? Like, Poison Sting? But yeah, Sludge is, like, a weird mid-game move? Why would you ever use this? It's, like, 65 base power with chance to poison, I guess. It's not that bad. 40% poison? Really? I think Smog has a 40% uh, chance. Wow, Sludge has 40, but then it got nerfed to 30? And while we're here, we'll check Smog. Smog is always 40, okay. And it used to be 20 base power, but then they changed it to 30, and it's always had 70% accuracy. Wow. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Smog. Whoa, Poison is right. Uh, do you feel ill? How bad is this? I think it's worse than Poison Gas. No, it's better than Poison Gas. Hey, 40% chance to poison, but you also have to factor in that you have only a 70% chance to hit. <laughs> Smog. Ooh. Smoke screen. I think it's exactly the same as sand attack. I don't think that's fake news, so we'll just put it next to sand attack. They're literally the same, uh, but more early game Pokemon get sand attack, which is probably when you're using these like filler moves, so I'll give sand attack the edge. But I think they have the exact same uh, effect, which is 100% chance to lower your opponent's accuracy. Missed the beginning of the stream. Is there a reason for not including Splash? Uh, the reason is I forgot to make it. I know we got a lot of grass type fans in this channel. Uh, Solar Beam. I'm sorry, guys. Solar Beam is not good. Solar Beam is. It, it really got the short end of the stick. I mean, sticks are made of wood, right? Grass type. Really unfortunate. Uh, really, really unfortunate. I, I'm not really sure where to put this. It definitely does not go in staples. It definitely does not go in staples. Solar Beam is so bad, guys. It's so bad. So, like, the, the two-turn charge basically means it's Razor Leaf, right? Because it's like you're using a 60 base power move each turn. So, what about Sunny Day? So, here's the thing. So, Sunny Day, if you use Sunny Day, Solar Beam goes off in one turn, right? But if you're using a Sun Team, it's probably because weather is really powerful, right? So that means other people are also using weather teams. And here's the thing. If, you're, if your opponent switches in their weather setter, like Tyranitar, as you use Solar Beam, the weather changes before you Solar Beam. So now you are stuck charging Solar Beam, and it does half power. Yikes. I think Solar Beam is actually worse than Razor Leaf. Yeah, it's really good on Mega Charizard Y, and that's about it. So if you literally are the drought Pokemon, then Solar Beam is pretty good, but that's about it. We covered Gylatine earlier. Here's his other move, Sonic Boom! Uh, bad. <laughs> uh, bad. Uh, Dragon Rage is up here. Sonic Boom is half a Dragon Rage, uh, but more Pokemon get it. It's also not perfectly accurate, so actually, I think it's, uh, I think it's actually worse than all of these, uh... It's pretty bad, actually. <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. Where is Flash Kick? Not in this tier list, unfortunately, but Blaziken in Pokken has both a Flash Kick and Sonic Boom. Like, he has animations that look exactly the same as both of them. There's no way that's a coincidence. Spike Cannon. Yeah, 20 power. Wow. And 100 accuracy. Wow. So it's always been just the best of these uh, multi-hit normal moves. But that's not saying much. Still pretty bad, and notably, I think the only Pokemon that get this are like Cloyster and Omastar, and neither of them are that interested in using this. But they can, I guess. Oh, Corsola gets it. Whoa, watch out! Corsola is also a great user of Spike Cannon. I'm guessing that smiley emoji means that you're joking, right? <laughs> uh, if Spike Cannon was a water move, it would actually be amazing. Like, no joke, it would be great, because then you would definitely use that on your skill link Cloyster. 
Spore. Grass type fans rejoice. Are you ready? Spore is a meta defining move. So in Gen 1, Spore is both really, really good and really, really bad. It's really good because uh, it's a 100% sleep move in a generation where sleep is absolutely busted, right? Because you can't act when you wake up. But it's only available on Parasect, who, putting it very kindly, is hot garbage. Uh, and saying it's hot garbage is actually uh, dealing immense damage to Parasect because it's both 4x weak to fire and 4x weak to poison in Generation 1. So I'm sorry, Parasect, you should have been better. However, since Generation 1, Spore has appeared on Pokemon that are not Parasect, okay? Which is good. <laughs> Guaranteed Sleep is so powerful. Basically, if you can run Spore, you are 100% running Spore. Smeargul, a Pokemon who can learn almost every move in the game, I think it can't learn like Chatter or something, always runs Spore. That's how good this is. That's how you know that Spore is a good move. And in VGC, uh, Amoongus is there, spamming Rage Powder, spamming Spore. It is so annoying. <laughs> Uh, you want to use Spore. Like, think of it this way, like, Spore always gives you an advantage, right? Because you spend one turn to sleep your opponent, and they are always sleeping for at least one turn. Amazing move. So, chat, thank you for reminding me that I forgot to add Splash. Uh, <laughs> so, Splash, useless move. Uh, cheese, useless streamer. So, Splash, you might expect me to put it in uh, useless, because its description actually says that it does nothing. But... You might not know. In Generation 7, with the Z Crystals, you can use Z Splash, and it gives you plus three attack. So that's better than Sword Stance at the cost of your item and your Z Crystal. Is that good? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Is that niche? I would say so. So it would probably be like bottom of... Niche, because for one generation, you can use it, and it's kind of good. Uh, but yeah, you should probably just Dragon Dance. <laughs> but it's a good meme. It's better than Rage. Stomp. Uh, somebody in chat really wanted to see Stomp. Well, here it is. It's filler. Where's Horn Attack? It's basically Horn Attack. I think, what is it? Is it like 60 base power? Uh, but it has a flinch chance, which is nice. So I guess we'll put it above Horn Attack. And also, if you minimize, Stomp destroys you. Strength. This is a move that people will also try to defend as not bad, and yeah, I guess it's not bad. It's an 80 base power normal move. That's so unimpressive. Uh, past generation one when you can get return, I don't know why you'd ever use strength, but hey, considering uh, where we've put these other filler outclass normal moves, we'll put strength right here. I mean, 80 base power is not the end of the world, and it's 100% accurate, that's not bad. Uh, but the thing is, like, it would be so easy to change this from, like, a weird niche filler move to legitimately good. And that would be to just make it a fighting move. Why isn't this a fighting move? Why? Rock Smash is a fighting move. Why isn't this? It's literally called Strength. Come on. Come on, man. String Shot. Used to only drop speed by one. Now it drops speed by two. And in doubles, it's AoE. Is that good? Uh, no. But, I mean, we'll put it here with the other moves that lower stats. In fact, we'll put it above Growl, because, hey, String Shot is AoE and lowers by two stages, so that's worth something, right? I don't think it's better than the accuracy-lowering ones, because the accuracy-lowering ones uh, are actually pretty useful in-game when you have bad Pokemon and, like, this is your only option. In triple battles, it's kind of cracked. Oh, okay. does it hit all opponents in triples? Just use Trick Room, bro. Struggle. Kind of a niche move? Well, I mean, I don't know, it's not even really a real move. So in Generation 1, it was actually type, or it was actually normal type, and since then it's been typeless. And the recoil damage has changed throughout the generations, it used to actually just do recoil based on the damage you dealt, and I think nowadays, because they really want to punish you, uh, it, it I think takes off like a quarter of your health when you use it. So Struggle is actually a move you might see occasionally? Not just when you run out of PP, because if you have no usable moves, say you have only non-attacking moves, and your opponent taunts you, which disables all of your non-attacking moves, you're actually forced to struggle. Uh, so I think struggle, because you will actually see it, I mean, you can't select it, but I mean, it's not useless, right? I mean, it, it pops up. <laughs> 
So in a way, isn't struggle the most real move of all? Because who among us hasn't struggled? Stun Spore. Uh, it's basically glare, uh, but a little bit more consistent, right? Because the accuracy has never changed. It's always been 75. Uh, more Pokemon get it than glare. Uh, but also, Stun Spore is in general a little bit worse uh, because grass types dodge all powder moves and Stun Spore is a powder move. Uh, so I'd say that overall it's a little bit worse, but uh, Glare is on far fewer Pokemon. So we'll give Stun Spore the edge like by a little bit, but they're basically the same. Glare is 100% these days, yes, but it's very recent. Submission. This is one I had to check because I was almost certain this thing got buffed to be like a a fighting type double edge, right? Like 120 base power, 100 accuracy, and recoil? Uh, no, it's 80 base power, 80 accuracy, and recoil. What? Why is it so bad, what? Uh, I think considering that, uh, we'll put it, I think it's worse than, well, I think it's better than rolling kick, I guess. Uh, this was your best option for fighting in Gen 1 if you weren't hit Hitmonlee, I guess, with the kicks. Uh, but yikes, why isn't this a fighting type double edge? Also, another instance uh, with a massive naming nerf, uh, because in Japanese it's Jigoku Guruma, which is Hell Wheel, which is awesome, and we got submission. Awful. Ah, uh, yeah, let's put it below Solar Beam. They nerfed it in Gen 5, is that true? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, they nerfed it as in they reduced its PP from 25 to 20. That's not that bad. But yeah, I guess technically they did nerf it. Wow. No mercy. Substitute. Well, if you haven't already, you should go ahead and set up a sub. 25% of your health in game, but it's free in real life. Please subscribe. Okay. Substitute. Uh, if you've never played competitive, you might be confused by this, but I think substitute is... Uh, my mouse didn't work there. I think Substitute is a meta-defining move. So in-game, Substitute just kind of wastes your time. <laughs> Why would you use this? But sub in competitive is amazing. If you sub at the right time, congratulations, you just won. <laughs> substitute does so much for you. It's unreal. So like, are you unsure of what move your opponent is going to use? Just Substitute. Uh, it costs you 25% of your health, but... It might have cost you 100% of your health if you get hit by the wrong move, right? If your opponent relies on using status moves to deal with you, just substitute, and now you're invincible. What are they gonna do? Uh, there is, honestly, like, there is no worse feeling in competitive than messing up and letting your opponent substitute, because you are going to lose at least one Pokemon, you might actually just lose the entire match. Substitute is incredible. Uh, and it's also a very, very fun, like, skill-testing move. Like, if you're a bad player, Substitute sucks. <laughs> um, but if you can use Substitute to your advantage, it's so powerful. So powerful. And it's really cute. And I guess, yeah, since we are talking about uh, Gen 1 quirks, uh, in Gen 1, if you explode against a Substitute, you don't die, which is pretty funny. <laughs> And one thing to note about Substitute is that it makes all multi-hit moves better because one of the benefits of multi-hit moves uh, is that they continue after breaking Substitutes. Yeah, in competitive, you pretty much always have to consider what if my opponent subs, do I lose? Uh, you might. But if you sub to this channel, you win. That's enough, okay. Super Fang. Super Fang is honestly pretty useful. So what Super Fang does is it halves your opponent's HP. So much like a Nightshade and Seismic Toss, this is a move that you use on defensive Pokemon that want an offensive option that doesn't rely on their stats. The big meme Pachirisu that ended up winning Worlds had Super Fang. Super Sonic. Any questions? Surf. Are you ready? I think Surf is meta-defining, so it is part of the crew of uh, super powerful, just like, staple moves with really no drawback. Uh, I don't actually think that Surf is better than Flamethrower in, like, competitive, but never underestimate the C tier, okay? Since we are also considering in-game, for generations 1 to 4 where you didn't have infinite use TMs, being able to slap Surf on any water Pokémon and make it at least usable 
That's amazing. And also it's worth noting that uh, Surf is a spread move in doubles. So unfortunately it hits everyone except in generation three where it only hits your opponents. And there are two games, Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon Coliseum XD, which are only doubles, except for like some wild Pokemon encounters. And in those games, you can use Surf. It's really good. Uh, yeah, ride that Surf. Pokemon XD does not use Coliseum as a subtitle. Well, you got me. Fourth time I have to delete my channel this stream. Swift, another weird translation. There's so many of these. So in Japanese, it's Speedo Star. Good name, because that's what describes it. And we got the Swift part. What happened to the stars? I'd argue that's more important. What? Swift is definitely a filler move. Uh, I think it's actually better than these uh, multi-hit ones. I guess it's, you can use it on Technician, Nasty Plot, Persian. And it never misses. Cool. Uh, since we are talking about Gen 1 in this tier list, uh, it's worth noting that Swift is the only move in the game that, as a base, cannot miss. Uh, because it doesn't have an accuracy check. It's as if you used an X accuracy where it doesn't say, like, does this move hit or miss? It just says it hits. Swords Dance. We are no longer doing the Butter Knife Shuffle. Swords Dance, good move. Is it meta defining? I don't think so. But in terms of boosting moves, really good. Uh, where's agility? Let's put it uh, in front of that. Swords Dance, really good. Uh, plus two attack, no questions asked. Yeah, good want it even higher. We'll put it here. As far as boosting moves go, it's really good. There's better ones. I like, I would put Dragon Dance in Meta Defining. Oh, that's true. A lot of Pokemon also get Swords Dance. All right, we'll, we'll move it up to Meta. Swords Dance is pretty good. How about that? Anybody upset by this? I don't think so. My Leafeon named Kale Chips Run Swords Dance Razor Leaf. I think it's mostly powerful because you named it Kale Chips. Tail Whip. Another weird translation because it sounds like they're hitting you with the tail to lower your defense, but they're actually, it's tail wag in Japanese, so they're just trying to lower your guard uh, by being cute. A uh, tail whip, pretty easy, goes with leer. Uh, I guess it's worth noting that tail whip, very similar to double kick, it's very important in the modern Pokemon animations are bad meta. Take down! Very underwhelming move. Uh, where did we put Submission? It's better than Submission. I think it's 10 base power more than Submission. Worse typing, but available on more Pokemon. We just did the Gen 5 tier list, and that's maybe where Takedown is the best. Because uh, Herdier gets it kind of early, and, and that's pretty good. Whatever, I'd, I'd, I'd rather use these normal moves up here, but if it's your best option, I guess you can use Takedown. Although it is important to note uh, that in the YouTube meta, a uh, takedown is one of the most powerful moves you can use. Uh, you can destroy any YouTuber you want, just use takedown. Uh, Cynthia actually used it on me after she lost the champion battle. Because <laughs> I got a copyright claim on her theme. Teleport. So it did absolutely nothing up until Let's Go Eevee, where it did get buffed. And now it lets you switch out with priority. Uh, but that priority is minus six. What? Teleport defense. It's good on Stallmons who want to take a hit so you can switch into glass cannons. If we consider only Gen 8, we would maybe put it at the top of niche, uh, but considering it was complete garbage for seven generations, it gets a little bit lower. Thrash? Sounds like trash, but it's not. Thrash is eventually one day going to be an outrage clone. So where's Pedal Dance? I don't think it's as good as Pedal Dance, not at all, because it is a uh, normal type move. Like, I don't know who actually runs this move, but as far as these filler moves go, I think Thrash is pretty good. Uh, also notably, the King of Gen 1, Nido King, gets Thrash really early and uses that. Uh, but past that specific use, I don't really know when you're thrashing. Oh. Look at the poor baby trainer using Dundershock. You want to be a real trainer? You gotta hit him with a Dunderbolt, baby! To the top! It's not better than Ice Beam. You want a good electric attack? You gotta use Dunderbolt. And now we can talk about the pairing Ice Beam and Dunderbolt. 
That's a Bolt Beam, baby. Hits every Pokemon for neutral damage, except for uh, Magnezone, I think. I'm pretty sure that's true. If you're wondering why I'm talking like this, it's because Lieutenant Surge uses Dunderbolt. Uh, I think Dunderbolt is actually better than Flamethrower. Uh, because it pairs super well with Ice Beam. Thunderbolt is amazing. Amnesia is the best boosting move in Gen 1. How is it niche? It's because you didn't read the rules, buddy. Thunderbolt. Meta move for sure, baby. That's enough of that. Thunder! Uh, where did we put Blizzard? Uh, we'll put Thunder with Blizzard. Uh, it, it's sort of in the same thing of... I don't know why its accuracy is so poor. It's definitely not as good as Fire Blast and Hydro Pump, but uh, if you're Kyogre, Thunder's really good. <laughs> uh, or if you're Galvantula, I guess, who used Thunder, but 70 accuracy is really shaky. 30% uh, chance to paralyze is pretty good. And yeah, if it's raining, uh, it's 100% accurate. Uh, also, more translation shenanigans, because I think Thunder is just an awful name. Uh, so in Japanese, it's Kaminari, which is just lightning. Uh, and Thunderbolt is Juman Borto, which is 100,000 volts. So what I would have done is I would have called Thunder, Thunderbolt. And I would have called Thunderbolt, High Voltage. And I would have just left Thundershock the same. That's what I would have done. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Um, I also would have called Thunderbolt, uh, Lightning Bolt! Lightning Bolt! Lightning Bolt! Lightning Bolt. Thundershock. Uh, this one should be pretty easy. Where's Ember? There you go. Easy. If you're a poor baby Pikachu, I guess you're using Dundershock. And once you come back as a real Raichu, you can use Dunderbolt. There you go. Thunder Wave. Meta defining. Meta defining, baby. You got you always gotta be on your toes. You could get Thunder Waved. Uh, Thunder Wave in the Gen 1 meta in particular was absolutely everywhere. You were Thunder Waving everything. And although it's been nerfed to 90% accuracy nowadays, uh, for a very, very long time, uh, you always had to be scared of getting Thunder Waved. Uh, if you're a sweeper and you get Thunder Waved, it's over. <laughs> right? Because you are never moving first again. And yeah, even nowadays, it's, it's very solid. And it also has surprising distribution. Tons of Pokemon that you wouldn't think get Thunder Wave, get Thunder Wave. Like Blissey, Thunder Wave in you. Uh, Ferrothorn, Thunder Wave in you. I'm actually going to put Thunder Wave ahead of Swords Dance. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, Thunder Wave nowadays, not quite the king because it is 90% uh, accurate and also uh, Paralysis got a huge, I would say, unneeded nerf where it only cuts your speed to half instead of 25%. I think it's it was fine at 25%. Toxic. I mean, you just heard my explanation for Thunder Wave, right? There's no way that Toxic goes anywhere lower than Meta Defining. Yeah, Toxic absolutely everywhere. Uh, like, honestly, without Toxic, Poison Type would be... Oh, Poison Type's still kind of a joke. But Toxic, incredible. It's basically a way for almost any Pokemon. It has insane distribution. Almost every Pokemon gets Toxic, and Toxic is how you put a timer on anyone. Defensive Pokemon, out of here, okay? Sweeper, out of here. Eventually. <laughs> Once Toxic takes its toll. Uh, part of the reason why Steel is so OP, 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 OP is because part of being a Steel type is being unable to be forced out by Toxic. Super good move. And Toxic is also the, it's part of the perk for poison types. So I think from Gen 6, it might have been Gen 5. So either Gen 5 or 6 onwards, Toxic, although it has 90% accuracy, when used by a poison type, has better than 100% accuracy. It has sniper accuracy. So it will always hit. When they say that, they mean even if you're digging, even if you're flying, even if you're diving, you're getting toxic. <laughs> I don't know why you'd be using any of those moves, but uh, Toxic will still hit you. I, I think people on the channel, because I always do in-game tier lists where Toxic is, you know, not that good and neither is Leech Seed, I think they think that I don't like stall strats, uh, but I really do. Uh, when I played World of Warcraft, I was a Warlock, which was all about using damage over time effects. Uh, and in Final Fantasy XIV, I was a Summoner, on, which Warlock. also is all about inflicting 
damage over time effect. I really like that kind of like sneaky subversive gameplay, but just not in in-game tier lists, which are the ones I mostly make. Stall strats, I love them. Like there's, it's a lot of fun uh, to basically do the uh, omae wa mo shindeiru thing, where you apply a bunch of dots, you drop the line, right? Omae wa mo shindeiru. And then they go, NANI! And then they die. It's great. <laughs> Transform. Uh, it's not quite mostly useless. I think it's definitely niche. Uh, so I'm not counting Imposter Ditto. Because Imposter Ditto is not actually using Transform, right? It just transforms automatically. Do you ever actually select the move Transform? I guess on Mew. Was Transform used more before Imposter was added? Well, before Imposter, you would never use Transform because you would just die because Ditto sucked. <laughs> transform Mew with Imprison Defeat Stall. That's interesting. So you Imprison and then Transform, and then it blocks all your opponent's moves? That's two turns, right? That seems so niche. Well, good thing there's a tier called Niche. We'll put it above these. How about that? Try attack Why is this a normal type move? It's... <laughs> It's three elements. I guess they couldn't decide which one won out, so they just made it a normal type move. A filler for sure. Uh, I think the potential upside of it, which is chance to burn, freeze, or paralyze, is probably better than flinch. So, I mean, we'll put it above head headbutt, but like, what are you actually running this on? Like, Porygon, I guess. If tri -Tac was typeless, that would actually be really cool. And that would also make it way better. Because uh, I think typeless is strictly better than normal, right? Because then nothing would resist it. It's not like normal is super effective against anything anyway. Oh, it would lose stab. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a point. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe, okay. Last thing about Tri Attack. Why are there so many triple Pokemon in Gen One? Right. You got Dodrio, you got Dugtrio, and you got a uh, Magneton, right? And then I guess Executor also has three heads. Oh, and Tauros has three tails. And Weezing is also sort of three conjoined things. Yeah. They just really Gen One or Gen Three. What's going on? Whoa. Acid Armor's text is so much bigger than everything else. Uh, can you guess why? I'll tell you why. It's, it's because I made uh, Acid and Acid Armor first, and then I sh decided to shrink the font. That's why. <laughs> Twin Needle. 25 base power. Hits twice. Uh, definitely goes in filler. So signature move of Beedrill. Fun fact, using Twin Needle, you could actually poison Poison or Steel types in Generations 1 and 2. Is that worth it? Not really, no. But it's neat. Yes, the best Gen 1 bug move. What a travesty. It's so sad. <laughs> Certainly nowadays they should buff this, right? It's a signature move, man. Come on, it should be 50, 50 each. Vine Whip. Should be pretty easy. Where's Ember? Where's Thundershock? Well, Vine Whip is a worse typing than these two, so we'll put it right below it. It was 35 base power, I think, at the beginning. They've buffed it now a little bit. I think it's just 40. There you go, your early game grass type filler move. Vine Whip. Is it better than Mega Drain? I think it is, because you get Vine Whip a lot earlier, generally. It's like a really early game filler move. Like, usually by the time you get Mega Drain, Mega Drain was a TM, right? From Erica? A fourth gym? You're definitely using better stuff than Vine Whip by then. It's 45 now, yeah. When did it get buffed to 45? It got buffed to 45 in Gen 6. Wow, it took them a long time. Do they not like grass types or something? Hmm, maybe my uncle really does work at Game Freak. Vice Grip. So the actual tiering of this should be pretty easy. It's just your general uh, filler normal type move. The question is, it's like a Berenstein Bears moment. The move is currently spelled V-I-S-E, Vice Grip. But it used to be V-I-C-E, Vice Grip. Why did they change it? Was V-I-C-E Vice Grip wrong? I know Faint Attack was spelled wrong for like five generations, but was Vice wrong? Isn't like the clamping Vice V-I-C-E? It's like Faint Attack. So V-I-C-E Vice was wrong. And now V-I-S-E Vice is correct? So this is Vice as in like a clamp, right? Like you'd have it in a workshop where you use a Vice to hold something steady. Okay, and the tool Vice Grip is S. So it should have always been V-I-S-E. They should revise that spelling. That's that's good. Yeah, I was gonna ask if there were any any vice presidents in the chat who could tell us the correct the correct spelling, but yours was definitely better. I guess the translator needed a word of advice. Uh, I see, yeah, vice script. In terms of actual use, it's just a filler move for uh, Pokemon like Krabby uh, to use until they get moves like Crab Hammer once they're actually Cookie Cookie Kingler status. Come on, chat, get a grip. These are good jokes. You guys are good. Waterfall. 
I bet you guys didn't know that Waterfall was a Gen 1 move. Never underestimate the C tier, okay? It's everywhere. And the king of C tier, C King, was using Waterfall in Gen 1. It's very good, obviously. Uh, not in Gen 1. In Gen 1, I think it's basically just worse than Surf. It has a flinch chance, but what are you outspeeding with Seeking? What? In general, it's a worse Surf, but they're also just very different, right? Waterfall is for physical water types. Uh, and in general, up until Gen uh, 5, which had infinite use TMs, just used Surf, bro. Yeah, nowadays, uh, Liquidation outclasses Waterfall, but... For a fair amount of time, Waterfall was your go-to move, so from Gen 4 up until they introduced Liquidation in Gen 7, and if you don't get Liquidation, use Waterfall. Generations 1 to 3, Waterfall does damage and has no secondary effects. Chad, I lied to you. Flint's Chance was added in Gen 4, but that's also when it became useful, because that's when it became a physical move. Water Gun! Uh, not a bad translation, it just sounds really cute in Japanese. Mizudepo. Real cute. Uh, we know exactly where this goes, right? Here you go. Now it's brine time! I'm assuming that's how we're supposed to read that. Bubble better than Water Gun. Uh, yeah, now that Bubble has been buffed, it is better, but for most of Pokemon's history, Water Gun has been better. Also, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a Water Gun TM in Mount Moon, that's true. And a surprising amount of Pokemon could learn it back then. Uh, R.I.P. Water Gun TM. I don't know why they got rid of it. The way you spoke in Japanese, it looked like you were using Water Gun. Yeah, that's why I really love how it's called in Japanese. Mizudippo. Cute. Scald is spicy water gun. Uh, that's putting it lightly. Uh, spoilers for the Gen 5 list. Yes, yeah, Scald is meta-defining for sure. Wing attack. Filler flying move. Where's Peck? It's better than those. This goes, uh, it's better than Slam. I think it's better than these. Woo, woo. We'll put it with Horn attack. We're not attacking with a horn, we're attacking with a wing. There we go. I think it's better than Stomp. Yeah, in Gen 1, a wing attack was only 35 base power, but it got buffed in Gen 2 to be stronger. Yeah, wing attack right now is just uh, strictly worse aerial ace. Oh yeah, so I guess you would use aerial ace on Scyther instead of wing attack. Guys, it's been 6 hours and 43 minutes. We're almost done. Last move. Withdraw. Oh wait, where's Harden? Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, wet Harden. Yeah, and we ended with... Uh, a, 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 not very exciting. <laughs> withdraw. <laughs> Sorry, cheese. You might have to withdraw that statement. Yeah, okay. I feel like Withdraw does something else, but I don't know what. I, I, I know that Skull Bash has Withdraw combined into its effect. It raises your defense when you use Skull Bash. Guys, we did it. <laughs> uh, so just over six and a half hours to rank every move introduced in Generation 1. Here is our completed tier list. Look, look, look at this. Look at this text. I feel like we are missing a move. We are missing three. Uh, I forgot... Cut! I forgot Counter, and I forgot Splash. Uh, so I'm just gonna smack them on screen right here in editing along with what their tierings are. Thank you everybody, thank you for your input. Uh, and please look forward to the edited version of this video soon-ish. Maybe today? What time is it? It's 1.30 here. Maybe not today. Okay. <laughs> Farewell.